Greetings from Podcastville. The Church of What's Happening Now is brought to you by Robinhood. Robinhood is an investing app that lets you buy, sell stocks, ETFs, options, and cryptos all commission-free, okay? They strive to make financial services work for everybody, not just the wealthy. Not an intimidating way for stock market newcomers to invest for the first time with true confidence. What I'm going to do is this. Robinhood is giving the church family a free stock like Apple, Ford, Sprint. Are you listening to me? A free stock like Apple, Ford, or Sprint to help build your portfolio. Sign up at church.robinhood.com. Again, that's church.robinhood.com. Listen, let me explain something to you, right? Everybody thinks you're smart. You think you're going to smart? Do me a favor. If you want to know what your smart is, you got to go to ZipRecruiter to hire the right person. ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you. It finds them for you. It's a powerful matching technology that scans thousands of resumes, identifies people with the right skills, education, and experience for your job, and actively invites them to apply so you get qualified candidates quickly. So what I'm going to do is this. Right now, the church family can try ZipRecruiter for free at this exclusive web address. You ready? ZipRecruiter.com slash church. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash church. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash church. Listen, if you're going to do something, do it the smart way. Hiring with, hiring with ZipRecruiter, that's smart. I also like to introduce to the church my bookie. Listen, tomorrow night's Thursday night. Tonight is Thursday night football. And you're sitting there again. You don't know what to do, who to bet. Listen, whether you're an expert or a rookie, you should be betting at my bookie. If you're the t- type of guy that likes to make a bet, bet a little and win a lot, like playing the numbers on a roulette, you can create a big parlay tomorrow night. That's three picks. Well, that's usually three teams, but you can do three t- picks. You can pick a college football team and two picks on the pro, the over and under and the pros, and if you hit all three, you can turn $100 into $600. All right? Why sit on the sidelines when it's time to get paid? Go to my bookie right now, log in, and double your money. You, Joey, what do you mean? Yeah. Use promo code CHURCH, C-H-U-R-C-H, and you'll get your first deposit matched 100%. Joey, what are you talking about? 100%. If you put in 100, they'll give you 100. You play, you win, you get paid. That's what my bookie does, all right? So go to my bookie right now and log in with promo code CHURCH, C-H-U-R-C-H, and double your, your, your initial deposit. By 100%. Kick this motherfucking mule, Lee. I still remember this album coming out. Like, that's how old I am. And, like, waiting around. Because it had been three years since they released an album. His kid died. And really nobody knew the future Led Zeppelin. Physical Graffiti was a fucking masterpiece. But when this came out, you took we took beatings for this. Because no matter how good it was, there was always a Beatles fan that said, don't worry about <laughs> The Beatles are getting back together. Greg Garcia, what's happening, beautiful? How's it going, man? How you doing? Sorry I didn't make you bash. I was telling you about my cat last night walking oh around. Oh, my God, like... yeah. And, Greg, this only happened in my house once before. When we first moved here, there must have been a cat that was pregnant in the neighborhood. And one day I'm watching TV and I'm hearing, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, under the bed. And I'm like, what the fuck? And Fidel was swollen. Oh, Fidel was the nicest cat in the world, and he all of a sudden he looked like a fucking raccoon. Oh no! And he was about to attack the other one, and I had to get Fidel, and Fidel was hissing at me. I had never seen that before. And then one time, Fidel and Superbad have beef since day one. <laughs> they got the same fathers. <laughs> They've had beef since day one. Fidel was always superior to Superbad, but Superbad's a scrappy cat. You got to watch Superbad. <clears throat> Superbad's the type of cat that you'll beat him up. And when you're fucking shaking hands with your friends, you'll come back and bust you. <laughs> He's black and white. Nobody really likes him in the neighborhood. Like yeah. his sisters are Siamese. <laughs> Nobody likes Superbad. And when we first moved up the corner, one day Superbad was fighting Harry. And he beat Harry up. Harry ran away. And Superbad's like, you know what? I'm feeling my oats right now. He looked over on the couch. And Fidel was sitting on the top of the couch. And my wife had just put the laundry basket down. And she had taken the laundry out. Superbad looks at Fidel like, you know what? Now, while I'm fucking you up, I might as well fuck you up, too. He jumps on the chair. He jumps on the couch. And he heads towards Fidel. Fidel's got him by 10, 
12 pounds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Superbad scrapping to the death. Superbad jumps on Fidel. Fidel's not ready for it. They're fighting. They land in the laundry basket. The laundry basket flips over. It's like a fight. It's a cage match. It's a cage match. I'm sitting there crying. They're going to kill my super bad. I open it up. They both break away. Like, what the fuck just happened? Two cats enter, one cat leaves. Oh, my God. That really fucking I hate. I hate all that shit, guys. I hate when my cats are at war. And last night was one of the scariest things. And there's two? There's two? I got six now. I'm down to six. Six. There was a, there was ten at one time. I lost Demi. I lost like the one. I lost Fidel, Sissy, and somebody else. Then I gained one when I moved to this neighborhood, okay. and she's my bodyguard. All right, she's loyal to me. Even the owner said the cat and you, you know, the cat was walking up the stairs scratching on the door, and my other cats would hiss at it. Wait, it wasn't lost. No. The I, owner gave I, it to you. I rented it from the. I rented it a, a two bedroom apartment. Yeah, from a, a two a house, and they had an outdoor cat, uh, and I became friends with this yeah. cat. I would come home from from doing comedy and go, and the cat would come out of a fucking bush and bring me a mouse, <laughs> a fucking raccoon. The cat was tougher than nails. Yo, you know, my brother found an Adam. You know, he loves cats. He found an outdoor cat, and he said that that cat, first of all, uh. Or just goes through the screen like if you if the screen's open she just cuts a hole in the screen comes in but with like outdoor animals oh, yeah. but kills them and eats them n- next to my brother like like she's just proud up of to the table yeah no just when my brother's sleeping he'll wake okay. up because he hears the cat eating a dead animal it's like a present to uh, you. yeah they bring yeah, you yeah. they're so loyal they're bringing you their prey it's fucking crazy when you live with a cat you live with a fucking killer a killer yeah after midnight once darkness sets in, when you're around a couple cats, you could feel it. They have a certain energy at night. It's very tough to describe. Living with cats and dogs is too dead. And I love them both. Yeah. Uh, if it was up to me, I'd have 20 of each. Do you remember? I, I used to have this huge St. Bernard. Oh, my God. Sure. But he, he looked like Beethoven. You know, all the kids and everybody thought he was going to be super friendly. But he had been hit in the, by a van in the head when he was like a puppy. And it turned him super mean. Yeah. So you remember people used to run up to this 140-pound dog like, hey, it's Beethoven. And I used to always go, no, no, slow, slow him down, slow him down. He came so close to biting off so many little kids' faces. It was fucking crazy. The, he had a dent in his head. So whatever side of the head that he got hit on changed his like emotions entirely. How do you deal with that on a daily basis? It was fucking, he almost bit off my cousin Scott's nuts in my apartment. He, oh, he hated him and I could tell he hated him, but because I was in the apartment, he wouldn't do anything. But I could tell he was, he put his head down and just kind of, oh, I want to bite the fuck out of you, right? <laughs> and we were moving me out of that apartment. And Scott and I were in the apartment together. And I, we were about to, you know, walk out. And I was like, hey, I'm going to go get the elevator. And as I turned the corner out of the front door, I thought, oh, that's a bad idea. And as I was turning back in, his name was Bud. Bud was lunging for scott's nuts he always was the nuts. yeah, yeah he it's was all about the nuts lunging it was fu- he was like uh it was hard it was anybody, hard to control here ever been bit by a dog uh, a little bit on the yeah. finger nothing crazy oh uh, my my sister has this little dog and uh i went home and uh she said yeah come on over and and just you know when the dog sees you it's a little hyper or whatever but you know just ignore it i was like all right so i walk in and the dog's barking all around and i just ignored it and i went and sat on the couch and the thing came up and sat on the couch next to me and just kind of stared at me for a second. Mm. And I was like, hey, buddy, you know, and it was okay. And then I slowly started to get up, and it bit the inside of my thigh uh. and latched on. So if I, I pulled my leg up, and it was hanging for a second, and it was, oh, it was rough. It was nah. rough. Did you go to, for a tetanus shot and all that shit? I don't think I did. What go you're for supposed to do? Yeah, yeah. I, I think, think I'd had to. one. I think I'd had one. I'm really like careful that. with yeah. mercy and dogs. Yeah. Because I was traumatized young. I got bit in the face by a German shepherd at five, four in the Bronx. And they kept telling me not to look in the mirror. Don't look at yourself in the mirror. And Mm. I remember just having cotton 
and taking the cotton off and seeing a patch of my face missing, going, Jesus Christ. And not fainting, you know, crying. Yeah. You know, I was scared. I didn't know. But then I went on a rampage of getting bit by dogs because of the fear. Uh, yeah. You can't have fear around dogs. So I would see a dog get fearful and they would bite me. So I went on. I got bit like four times after that. Good Lord. That's <laughs> a lot yeah, of dog I bites. kept getting bit by dogs <laughs> until I had a, you have to, uh, what's that? Uh, fake it till you make it type of attitude. Yeah, yeah that's like it. You really have to believe it in your heart that you're not scared of dogs no more. And then I stopped getting bit. Huh. But I had such a fear that they would they would leave. Like a dog would see me two blocks away and then attack me because that's how much my oh, fear was man. towards them. Oh wow! And then one day I had to like let the fear go from inside, and I'm like, that's what it feels like not to be scared. And they never messed with me again. Oh, that's crazy. One time I was doing a burglary and I had to <laughs> I fed him all fucking week. And then I had a burglary. He turned on me, that fucking Jew. Yeah. <laughs> all week I'm giving him double. What'd you feed him? Whoppers. Oh, shit. You give a dog a whopper. Yeah. They eat it in two fucking yeah. bites. They love it. They'd spit out the tomato. <laughs> but everything else is solid. I must have given this motherfucker a whopper every day. Well, did you show up with a whopper the day of the burglary? No. See? Oh, That's man, why they, I fucked oh, up. You know what I mean? By that what time we packing? built the bond. Yeah, but how do you not? Oh. Not show up with the whopper. Yeah, that's the most by important that, day. By that, time, <laughs> yeah. the, by that time we built the bond. Apparently you know not. What? Apparently not. You made a very good point. Yeah. I never even thought about that. You got to bring the whopper yeah. every day. You got to yeah. bring the fucking whopper. That's my that's my slogan for life. You got to bring the whopper every day. That's what I wake up and say to myself every day. That's what Harvey Weinstein said too. You got to bring the whopper every, every day. day. He's getting charged with raping 19 different states and shit. That poor bastard. <laughs> They got him for rape in India. How can you rape somebody in India? You know what I'm saying? Even ISIS is looking for, for rape. That's their middle name. That's how you get into ISIS. You got to rape somebody. And ISIS is looking for Harvey. They got to post on Harvey. Poor fucking Harvey. Where's he hiding these days? Oh, no, they, no, they just took a no, picture. No, no. I haven't he's seen not. one in a while. They I saw one a while ago. They just took a picture of him at a supermarket no, he's reading. In prison. No. No. Yeah, no. They, no, no, they just yet. took a picture. Picture of him at a supermarket reading sure. one of the fucking mags, just like catching up, reading on one the of Hollywood, the uh, yeah, gossip. reading one of the mags, one of the gossip mags. I, I guarantee he's like looking at the star, going, "I didn't even come on the tits. I oh. came in the mouth." <laughs> She's such a fucking liar. No, he's... I came in her asshole. Why is he saying that I came on her face? <laughs> <laughs> he's something because he's. I believe he's getting accused by twenty five women. I believe twenty five women. It's a it's and a high then, like, number. Twenty two other women are just jumping on the bandwagon or something. I, you know what? I I, bet you, I, 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 I would I wouldn't be surprised if you gave me a super high number of actual cases. I would not be surprised if you think about all the access he had to these girls and on a daily basis on a daily basis like he had access to these women and women who aren't even famous now. Who we don't know about, who aren't for sure aren't coming forward because people are going to be like, man, like you know, he's, they're going to be dragged through so much shit. So, man, I, I, I don't I, know. I saw a video. Yeah, of him. Dude. Did you see that video of him where uh, some woman was uh, pitching him some idea or something, and she had a uh, her camera on on her laptop, and she's just sitting there very businesslike, and she's showing him what well, we could do this, and we could brand your thing here and this movie here, and he's just staring at her the whole time. And then he says, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do that. So, so you're gonna be, uh, you're gonna be nice to me. You gonna nice." And it's like within like a minute Dude, of sitting down. With so this he woman. has so much access. If you gave me, if you said the number actually is in the triple digits, I'd be like, "He was in this business twenty years. Yeah, I fucking believe that." You know, if you take your dick out ten times a day, three people will suck. <laughs> You ever think about that? Like, if you go to 7-Eleven and take your it, dick out, it, some people throw a rock at you. So what but you're, eventually, yeah. if you take it out 10 times, three, three, three people are going to suck it. So what you're saying is your odds for your dick sucked and your odds for, like, in Major League Baseball, those are about the same, same odds. Four out of five yeah, dentists yeah. recommend five yeah. dentists. Three out of 10 yeah, people will suck yeah, your dick. Yeah. If you take your dick out somewhere 10 times, Three people, different yeah. places. You really think it's ten? I, I guarantee you. Can you think make it's it, three out of ten? If you no, can make it, it three out of hundred, if you can make it to seven without the cops catching you, <laughs> thank you. You should get three. You just get a free pass. <laughs> like a chubby man just came into Ralph's and took his dick out again. And he, and he counted to three. Nobody sucked, and he got in his car and left. And then he pop up in Culver City. 
you know, if you can make it to 10 spots in one day, that would be tremendous. Oh, one take, day? In <laughs> one afternoon. Like, just take your dick out. Like, he left. Nobody knows what kind of car he had. Like, you could actually, because people are looking for you with a gun. People are looking for you with, like, a bag. Yeah. Somebody yelling. But you just walk into Whole Foods in the granola aisle. You see, like, three house moms yeah. with yoga pants on. You take out your dick. Give it a minute. Oh, my God. A minute? A minute. A minute. <laughs> you got to count to 30 seconds. Like, I don't think it's going to take that long. It's like Practical Jokers. That's the show we got to pitch, Josh. Well, take out we, your dick. We got to find something. Crazy <laughs> take out your dick for three minutes in the fucking supermarket <laughs> and see who'll suck it. This year on True TV. I used to go I, to I acting w- class. I'll tell you time. something right now. I would bet you this because in college, we used to take out our nuts at a bar <sighs> and <laughs> and we would call it hanging brains. And we would see who could hang brains the longest. Well, nobody fucking notices. You know who notices? Other dudes. Other dudes will come up to you and go, hey, man, your nuts are out. I'm like, yeah, dude, I fucking know. I know my nuts are out. (laughs) Other dudes. But like, no, every time somebody said something to us, it was a guy who was like, hey, man, your nuts are out. You know, I was thinking about something. Logistically, I know like four men that can press charges on me. Yeah. Because I used to wear jeans with, yeah. no, with and holes in the balls. Yeah. I was so poor uh-huh. that I would get a little ripped. Dude. Why fix it? You and went- I would sit there and show you my balls. And I still remember <laughs> one day chasing Rogan with my balls yeah. out. And he was losing his mind. Like nobody had ever chased him. He's like, Joey, I swear I'm going to hit you. But he wouldn't turn around. He kept running because my balls were in my hand. I'm going to rub them on you. He could definitely take me to court. Right, so that's one, yeah. The so first Josh 10, Wolf, me, the, for the first 10 years Wolf. that I knew him, oh. he didn't wear underwear and he had holes in his he pants. He still doesn't wear underwear. I still don't wear Sometimes. Yeah, now but, I got a kid. But you, you had, know, you had you a hole in your pants you for the first the 10 years that I knew him. Oh, please. I love a hole in your pants. If you have a hole in your pants, you ain't shit. I saw Look his at nuts. Right here. Look at these right here. Count the holes. This is all from marijuana. One. These are all marijuana. Because I smoke pot while I take a shit. Wait, you used to? Let's say... Let's say I got these the other day. Let me tell you what happened the other day. I have a I have a back bathroom. Everybody complains that they have a hard time taking this shit. I have a back bathroom in the office. I open the door. I can open the door into my backyard. So in the mornings after I have my coffee, a piece of nicotine gum, I give it like 20 minutes. I sit out there and I fill that pipe up and I start hitting. And when you cough, the shit flies out of your ass. <laughs> So the other day, I'm sitting there taking a shit with my pants down on my things. I got yeah. my me undies on. I got sweatpants on. And dog, do you know that I went like one of those? Yeah. And an ash flew right out and flew right between my legs. <laughs> and I could see the me undies going on fire. And I'm over there hitting my things. A piece of shit's coming out of my ass. You know, you know, you don't have to push no more. Like <clears throat> nothing. Just take a hit off that thing, hold it in. Oh, Are you blowing God. the smoke? It comes right out like fucking yogurt at Menchie's. <laughs> you ever go to Menchie's and you press the thing? comes right out. With the swirl. You don't have to wipe your ass or nothing. There you go. <laughs> A little something for Leo. Yeah. On a Wednesday night, you know what I'm saying? I haven't fought in a week. You definitely just shit on that chair. <laughs> Uh, How long did it take you to figure this out? Like, like, like I, you have a scientist I did, or something. It's, no, I was not. It's not like it's I invented it. I went to the bathroom one day. I'm sitting here like minding my own business. With the apple. Yeah, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're gonna talk about this in school. You know, in uh, hundreds the of years. Grade. I don't yeah. like yeah. talking to people on the phone when you take a shit. That's disrespectful. Of course, yeah. that's disrespectful. Yeah. So I'm sitting there looking at trees. The <laughs> elementary school's behind my house. I right hear kids playing in the trees. That's nice. So I'm sitting there one day and I go, "What else can I be doing while I'm sitting here?" <laughs> I got it. Let me kill two birds with one stone. I got the weed right there. Yeah. So I take the got weed out and I smells. smoke it. And when I push the first time, instead of going, Ugh, nothing. You cough. <coughs> and all of a sudden, just every time you cough, piss, you, you hear little pieces fly out of your ass. <laughs> like, hey, genius. And I've been doing it ever since. I've been losing weight steady. You know what I'm saying? Dude, I, I thought I was sitting next to you on my plane ride. From L.A. to Boston last week, this dude was lighting up the plane. Oh, I light him up on fire. I'm lactose tolerant now, so before I fly, I have a milkshake. Can I just to make sure dude, I make my statement dude, on the plane? Can I tell you this dude? So, first of all, he was trying to be sly. He he would do that little shift, and right when he did the shift, you would get hit You'd with get just it all. yeah, and and um, you know it was him just because of like. 
there's a certain freshness <laughs> proximity gives you. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I, I know what you're talking you about. You know what I mean? Like, there's like start, oh, you, a little you can, warmth to it. You can tell how much it's been diluted by the time yeah. it gets to you. But if you're on full blast, you know you're right next to yeah. the person, it's right? Dense. Listen, it's bro. dense at that. So, so he hits me, right? And the first one, I'm like, you know, I'm going to respect that. Okay. <laughs> we respect. Dude, by the third one, I actually, it, it was so bad. I said out loud. Come on, right? <laughs> he's looking on his iPad. He's got his headphones in. He never looks at me. Go on, look. He's gassing me the whole flight. We're at about the tenth time, and I'm not kidding when I tell you. I this is how drastic it is. You know the pillows I have. I have them over my face, <laughs> so just my eyes are over it. And when he farts and I smell it, I put the pillow over my face and I turn and I look at him. Do you know this motherfucker never, never even looked. looked my way, not once, like a fucking pimp. Are you sure you on your flight? Did you have the window? Yes. Mistake number one. He, never he, take the window. It was so bad. I don't bad. sit in the window because then you're trapped inhaling that fart. The fan, uh, the air condition is at your feet. That's where the f- if you blow if you smoke a vape pen on a p- plane, watch yeah. what happens to the smoke. Go like this, whoosh, blow it at a at an angle down, and you'll see it go whoosh, right into the floor. So you're inhaling. Even if I'm in row, I'm across from you, and I'm blasting. You're inhaling. If half the fart breaks, <laughs> like a blue, you know what I'm saying, like, like it's it, supposed to, like it's supposed to. Now, when I got on a plane, I make sure everybody's got earphones on. If I see everybody with earphones on, I'm going off. I even pivot the hips up. Do you? Oh, yeah, because I know how to pivot the hips up. <laughs> yeah. My goal is to make it bounce off, and I'll pivot like this so it bounces off the screen right into your face. You know what I'm saying? So you sit there and like read. a game of Paul. And yeah. now, listen to this. Like and, a George Gervin So you got to understand. Shot. What people don't understand is if you take an early flight, you're in danger. Because that means 20 people got on the plane without their morning shit, and they had a coffee. And on JetBlue, were pompousets. I'm drinking double espresso. Yeah. So I'm throwing heat from the fucking time I walk on. I'm blasting double espresso. You understand me? Double. Doubles. Uh, Did I tell you the menu last week? On, did I read you the menu on JetBlue? Jet Blue menu. Yeah. Did I read it to you last week? Let oh, me read you last week's this is last Sunday. This is what 27 years of flying has done, is you know how to fart on a screen? This like, is last. Fl- this exactly is, right. This is Sunday's menu. You ready? All right. It opened up with a pea ricotta pesto dip with crostinis. I passed out. I had a Xanax, and I smoked a joint of that dirty bazooka. Uh-huh. And I woke up, and there was fucking a little tray of of dip with a bunch of Italian bread and cheese. It was peas. And then I had a kale cob salad, a, tris, a citrus salad, seven grain risotto, pan seared halibut, and citrus braised pork. That's how you live on fucking... On, look at what it was. Oh my God, I forgot that she was there. Look at what it was. Oh my Jesus, I forgot on the. Oh, oh, I forgot. Oh, look at this, look at this one. Uh, <laughs> look at that piece oh, of sh- he, he sent that to me. I took that shit in the morning uh-huh. and sent it to him early morning. It looks morning. like a brown carrot. Oh, I said, no, look, <laughs> looks like a black spear. Look yeah. at that. Look at that thing. Oh, that you thing got, is, it's sticking out of the look water. Look at that. It's beautiful. That's yeah. a, and when, when, when you flush it, uh, it, it breaks like, in it, half, and then it gets, and they choke each other. Uh, and they're like, I'm going down first. No, I'm going. Because once you break those sticks of that. Yeah, it looks like something they would fight with on Game of Thrones. Yeah, it does, right? Yeah, I think so. Imagine seeing that at 7 in the morning. Oh, my God. Well, no I, 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 I hit like two or three people with that email. <laughs> and they were like, what the fuck? Tom Segura always gets one. The bigger the pieces, Tom Segura. You never he post, probably loves them. You never post these on Twitter because no. then it's endless. You'll get shit from all over the world for days. Is that true? Yeah. If you take a picture of, of shit and put it on Twitter and tell people like a joke, you're done. Because <laughs> now everybody, somebody takes a shit for the next five years. You're going to open up your Twitter and there's a picture of somebody oh taking that shit. On Instagram. God. Don't make that mistake. <laughs> but if you have a friend that enjoys those pictures, uh, yeah. If you have a friend that enjoys those pictures, yeah. like Tom Segura, the bigger the shit, he gets the first picture. <laughs> Anything over 18, 19 inches, he gets the first picture. It's like a fit. Like you when you measure a fit. You can hit Tom Segura up for a job, anything. It'll take him an hour to get back to you. Hit him with a piece of shit. Right back. Oh, Jesus. What have you been eating? <laughs> right back to you. It wakes him up. Does on the he reciprocate? Do you, get, do you get pictures of shit? Nobody can throw heat like that. No. That's they after, don't compete. What I do is, see, that's after three days. 
Like I was telling Lee, when I go on the road, my asshole knows. It doesn't want to fuck up the bathroom at the hotel. So it just drops off little turds from time you to time. You don't shit at the, ba- at, at the hotel? Ah, my asshole don't like it. But once I get off the plane and I hit the 405, that's when your asshole starts telling you, what's that song? Here we come. By the time I hit the 101 and my asshole spots a Laurel Canyon exit in two miles, ooh, <laughs> then you hit that little exit that's yeah. got that magnet. <laughs> and when I'm making that left around Laurel Canyon, I hope there's not a homeless lady there because she's going <laughs> down, Jack. My asshole's on fire. I put the luggage down. I run right to the bathroom. And, I mean, what, that's the first thing I do when I land. I, the bathrooms at the hotel, I love. But they're always by the door. So you That's stick true. up the whole room. So next thing you know, you're out of room service, and the poor guy from Haiti has to come in Yo. and remind himself of his country. I was in a hotel. That's what it smelled like. <laughs> when he left. That's what Haiti smelled like when he left. All of a sudden, he's been here for two years. He's got a green card. He's working midnight room service. And he needs to smell this shit again. I thought you'd like that. It's like a, little, like, a, like a grenade or something. No, if I'm shit in my hotel room, I got class. I don't know who raised you. <laughs> I go down yeah, to the lobby with you? and destroy the lobby. You'd rather shit in the lobby than in your room? Yeah, oh, no because way. then I got to sit in that room for 12 hours. And Can't you shut the hell. door? Even if you shut the door, this is Uncle Joey. What, yeah. Right. I just had peered, pan-seared fucking Christina. You want yeah. that in your no. room? <laughs> you don't want that in your room. You understand? Yeah, me? a lot of no. those hotels don't have fans either. No, no. they don't have fans. So you sit there they all day with rotten ass. So, no, no, I just take make believe like not to. I get a cup of coffee. Excuse me, where's the nearest roller skating rink? And then oh, you just oh, is there a bathroom? Just throw that in the second. And they don't even look. <laughs> you go right there to that hallway and blast it out. When you're walking out, the janitor's walking in, and you look at him like, who the fuck was in here? <laughs> Jesus. And the guy will look at you, see, get best I know, stinky white people, fucking animals. What I if walk. you wake up at like 5 in the morning? Do you go downstairs? No, I would never wake up at 5 to have to do that. But if, if I have time, like if I'm civilized, and I don't have to go to the bathroom, like if I'm getting anxiety, I'll shoot downstairs and go in the hallway. I don't want it in my bathroom in my room. Then the room stinks for two fucking days. I know what comes out of my ass. No ventilation, no open windows. You're in there inhaling that. Because the, the fart smell goes away. Uh. But you always have that, that center smell. Like if you ever cut a piece of shit, have you ever lost anything, like swallowed a ring, and you have to go cut a piece of shit in half? The smell that comes no. out in the middle is brutal. It's the center of the universe, and that's yeah. Look at my, poor, no, my kid, my kid swallowed a little metal ball once, and I had to the duty of making sure that you know that it came out at some point. So yeah, and did I'm, you go in with a spoon? Oh, you go in with a spoon and and a paper plate, and it's fucking disgusting. What did so you do what did he poop after? in? Like a bucket? Yeah, I had a little like uh, colander thing that he could yeah take a dump in. And like how a, many did you have to go through before you found your? <sighs> I mean, you know what the. What early you do early is gotta, gold what miners. You do is you there's probably spe- only about four or five. Yeah, you got a spaghetti strainer. Yeah, you've got a spaghetti strainer. Yeah. put the shit in there. No, and then hit the spaghetti strainer. But yeah. in the, the kitchen sink, water. though. Yeah. 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 What are you gonna do? What are the options? <laughs> no, I know you don't have a lot you of options. You do it in the yard. Yeah, you know your birds are dying in the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. You see twelve birds dead in the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Because your kid ruined the whole fucking plantation. So for you had to go through it four times. Yeah. Yeah. And then you find you've never been so happy to find something. In your entire Ever. life, it's yeah, buried yeah. treasure. You're never gonna have to do that again. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And did and does he remind you that you did that? Ever? No. Uh. Uh-uh. How old was he? Uh, probably four. <sighs> I'd remind my dad. Yeah. I think I would. Do you remember when that time when you had to go through my shit? <laughs> <laughs> and they'll look at you and go, yeah. "Don't remind me." Yeah. Yeah, Let's I think I would. Change the subject. I think I would. I think I would. Why not, man? I think it's just got all that stuff. Ugh. What do you do with the spoon after? Oh, you use it for coffee the next you day. Throw you throw it out. Fuck, you throw it away. It's a plastic spoon. Oh, okay, thank you. Oh, yeah. I used to. Well, you save it and wash Smart it. Smart move, yeah. yeah. It. Think ahead. You use plastic. Yeah. Yeah. If I did, I, I'd wash and give it to you so you get to oh. taste the ass in your mouth <laughs> so you can finally like to eat ass. Something. Something to bring you there. You don't you eat, eat ass? No. After you eat the soup, you'll go, Jesus, the soup is good. It was in a spoon with ass. See, it's not that bad. <laughs> Hummus and ass. What's the difference? I told you. I, I told you. Uh, to me, the asshole is like the body's uh, vanilla extract. It smells and tastes completely different. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, you know how vanilla extract, you're like, oh, that smells nice. And you taste it and you're like, that's bitter. And you smell the asshole and you're like, that kind of smells like shit. 
but you taste it and you're like, man, it doesn't really taste like it though. You know what I mean? I think I think this is just everyone who's done it wants everyone like wants me to do it now because it was so terrible. You have to do so it. You, you have just to pretend like it's good. Take, no, no, I'm just take telling Quigley you. Quigley offered to put a line of no, coke on her asshole. Yeah, well, he would lick it off with a line of coke. Are you kidding me? What's nice you, little numb tongue. I don't want a numb tongue. You lick- <laughs> 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 what are you talking about? Uh, but you, sh- oh, I mean, that's so quite an offer. And for that, that's a good story for it to be your first time. I don't want it there to be any time. So, like, there's so I, I would please much rather eat get, pussy. Please, please, why why is that weird? Please don't get him started. Really? Yeah. Everyone is saying I have to do it. It's, it's, there's shit up there. I don't care how. You see all those heroes, all my heroes. They didn't eat ass. You thought, you think Charles Bronson ate ass? 100%. No. I think he just came from eating ass. That's why he always looks like that. All those great men ate ass. They flipped them over. Opened up that asshole, stuck a finger in it. Those guys don't let eat the pussy. Vapors. The best is when you finger the asshole for a while, uh-huh. and then you take your finger out, and that face vapor comes out, and you take it like a man. You smell the ass, but you're like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I got 20 lines of coke in me. I've done worse. You know what I'm saying? You just get that first fume of kidney and fucking colon. Kidney. It smells like everything. Oh, my God. <laughs> you make you it sm- sound so great, Joey. <laughs> you can smell the liver without the onions. <laughs> 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 oh my god Greg Garcia what's happening buddy? Uh, I love this this is fun I just come and listen to stories I this fucking is fucking love craziness it. I love it now I gotta ask you something yeah because I've been telling a joke on stage lately and I don't know if it had to do with you if my memory's fucked up okay when we lived in Seattle don't tell them that I got beat up with the umbrella I don't wanna hear that shit again <laughs> who whose idea who was the promoter of that show the promoter of that show was the skinny weird guy who drove up in the hearse. The black he was Tell the, he was the what di- I'm talking about. So here. he was the, he was a DJ, um, and he used he, he used to travel around a hearse, and then he would bring his stuff in in a coffin, and he. What was the name of the night? Fetish night. Fetish night. Okay. And so, so they could come in with any fetish they wanted, and then downstairs in the basement there was that side room where they could do extra weird shit but they had to pay an extra fifty dollars i think to get into that room and so that was the room behind the bar remember downstairs behind no, that's the bar the room where the guy was putting like jumper cables on his nipples yeah and that, that's the way that's all because also- i told this guy a story that i went to a place one time where the guy was upside down and they were sucking his dick and it was i remember leaving there going that's tough to suck a man's dick when they're upside down <laughs> because all the head all the blood's in the head yeah and I remember going, like, I went over and looked, and the guy was sucking, like, like his cheeks were sucked in. I'm not, I don't know if focused. that was my place. That wasn't your place. <laughs> I don't think your so. Your place was, yeah. I went downstairs, there was a chick on a pool table one night, and there were milks, and they had it tied up to every hole. Yeah. Like, and they weren't fucking her or nothing. She had, like, a, a thing with a key on it. The chastity belt. The chastity belt, and they would melt wax on it, and she had, like, nipples on her ring. And there this was, was your place. Yeah, the, downstairs, there local, was, local. There was a, that back room. There was one night where there was a glass table, and dudes would get under the glass table and watch naked girls squat and, and poop, and they would pay a ton of money. So he got me the a guys the man job on the guys, nights. The guys paid a ton so of money. So I'd be upstairs. So you're keeping the peace at this place. No, 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 no. I'm upstairs checking IDs, but people are coming up saying what's going on. And I would go, Psst, Josh, come here. Work the door for five minutes. Let me go downstairs and take a peek. And let me tell you something. All those fetish things, it's like when you go to a nude beach. There's nobody at a nude beach that you want to see yeah. nude. Like, when you hear advertising for a nude beach, do not go there. It's no. people that look like me. Oh, yeah. Women that look like me. <laughs> but, but, uh, Tom Brady's wife does not go to a nude beach. No. And when you go to those fucking fetish things, it's people who are just, it, the, the, there wasn't one, like, the, the lady that we saw that was naked, her pussy was so fucking ugly. <laughs> Like, her pussy what? was so fucking ugly. <laughs> like, if I remember anything from that club was the one night when the chick was tied to the pool table, and in your wildest dreams, you couldn't fuck this chick. But they were all, like, they were all lovey-dovey. It was a scene where everybody, the ugly you were, the better you were in in that there scene. Was, yeah, I remember that show, was, Real Sex, on HBO, and they do, like... Not good-looking oh, people, rough gross crowd. people. Rough crowd. The woman had a gut like mine. Like, at that time, I wasn't even that heavy. Yo, she but, had a gut. They were putting, uh, they were putting like, piercings with hooks. 
Uh, so they would pull on her from different directions. But do you remember the one thing I'll say? Never a problem that night. Do you know what I mean? There was you were security, were court, but not court, really. No. Do you know what I mean? Like no, out, no, no. There was never out of all yeah. the nights that I had there. There was never a problem. And then you had an Asian night where you made was, you, you stole a thousand dollars. But they they were drinking Don Perignon, but, and he would come home and go, "Here's fifty dollars. I stole a thousand. They they were paying obscene prices for. I was like, "How much you want this bottle of for of creme creme de menthe? Yeah. And they'd be like five hundred dollars. I'm like, "You got it. Five hundred dollars creme de menthe. It was ridiculous. Yeah. But we had there was a lot of security that night. Yeah, those nights were outside. There was a lot outside, nah, 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 of shootings and shit that yeah, night. Yeah, that was Kung Fu night. That oh, because of Seattle. Why did yeah, it was rough. It was <coughs> rough. And those brothers ran it. And that one dude who owned the club, partially owned it when I first started, was part of the uh, Korean mob. Jesus. And that was, a, it was real shady the first six months or so that I worked there. Until the Japanese guy took over. Until Aki took over. And he was a real good dude. He just want. He was. He was a really good dude. He just wanted. The reason that place got shut down. Remember, it got shut down because I was out of town doing a gig, and he decided to throw a party at U Dub, and and just put posters up all ages. It's not an all ages club. I kept telling him. He was like, "Yeah, but it won't be a problem." I'm like, "It's, <laughs> it's if you do this party, we're gonna get shut down." And he was like, "No, no, no it won't be a problem because we'll make sure they're not drinking." I'm like, "How are you gonna do that?" And sure enough. Before I got home, he called me. They shut the place down. I'm like, yeah. yeah, you dumb. Because I had the sweetheart of a deal, man. Yeah, what did you do exactly? Though? I He gave me uh, 10% off the top because he was going to close it down. And remember, I kind of I was like, hey, dude, before you close it down, give me three months to try to turn it around. And he gave me three months, and he was like, this is going re- way better than I thought it would. What's it going to take? And he was like, how about 10%? And I thought he meant to like... Whatever his profits were, it was t- he gave me. He wasn't a great business guy. He gave me ten percent off the top, and I was like, "That's good." And then I got to bartend any night I wanted to. I got to hire my friends. I got to set up all. I did everything. Yeah, he had a great lunch. Oh, dude, there was, that Mexican guy lunch. could he used to make chocolate oh, mole sauce. Mole sauce. Oh, so good. Lunch at the place. Yeah, El Lobo Loco. He let me rename it. And I would go in there and eat on the arm. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Is. It- is, That's the way is, it is. Yeah. Is is the woman tied to the pool table during lunch? No, no, no. no, 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 no. This is a Tuesday nights. Tonight. Okay. Wednesday, Tuesday night. Night. Wednesday right. nights. Wednesday nights. Wednesday nights. Wednesday nights. Wednesday nights. That's a special. That's a, that's a so special a night. Night. That's pool tonight. night. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And was... I just pictured now a lunch lunch crowd. Yeah, I didn't play as well at lunch. But okay. they also yeah. had Alex Rodriguez's 21st birthday party. Yeah, we there. did. Yeah. All right. You know, with women walking around with shots. There was also a night in there where they had a release party for the heroin chick. And I heard horrible stories that she had guys shooting her, the Kurt Cobain's wife. Oh, yeah, 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 and yeah. And they yeah, had a party yeah, for You got to remember, this was downtown Seattle, and it was down the block from the bass player from Soundgarden's bar. Cent- the Central? Was it Central? It was. No, 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 no. So Lobo Loco had a parking lot next to it, and then you walk to the corner, then you cross the street. And if you walked 50 yards, it was somebody from Soundgarden owned oh. the bar on that street at that time. So they were, Soundgarden was never there, but people were always there. Yeah. And then if you walk the other way, down the block, you hit the Comedy Underground. Yeah, which was my favorite club of all time. Now, that fucking block and a half to the Comedy Underground, and I'm looking at you, and I have him, you could have gotten killed there. (laughs) Oh, yeah. You could have gotten killed there. Yeah, it was that bad, huh? There was something about it that you don't know what, it was heroin. I'm a, I'll never forget one night. But it was really just there, man. It was that that square. Just that, yeah. one, stretch. Just that one three block section. Yeah. Was a skit. Because I still remember you booked a club on a Monday night one time after the open mic, right down the corner. Yeah. And we walked out and we were yelling at two guys that were getting into a fight. Like these guys were about to stab themselves and we're like, hey, fuck you. And they're like, fuck you. And they kept fighting them. And like the guy would stop and look at us like, I'm coming for you. Yeah. <laughs> like it was crazy. Yeah. These three blocks. These yeah. three blocks. It was, it was, it was, it was one of the best times of my life. Yeah. One of the best fun. How long were you guys up there? He was up there way longer than I was. 93 to 97 for me, right? Wow. 
No, no, no. 94 to 97. I walked in 95 and I made it to 97. Okay. Yeah. 97. I got arrested six times in two years. No, wait. Jacob was born in 97. I made it to the end of 96. Yeah. Because I came in January of 97. Yeah, yeah. Jacob was born after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking crazy. Yes. Yeah. Because that... what year did we meet? <sighs> 99. Okay. All right, yeah. 99. You know what's funny is I... I So the, the first TV deal that I got off of that one-man show thing, he was the writer for it. And um, he, he, but he was being, oh, he was being over. Oh yeah, some guy was supervising. Supervising me. a guy named uh, Danny Jacobson was supervising him. So I, but you know, I, I saved that. I tell you, I saved that script. Yeah. That you wrote, and I read it the other day, and I was like, this is still fucking funnier than anything I've ever written in my entire life. Like, <laughs> Doubt that. yeah, dude, it, it, it's still really we had funny. Fun, we had fun with that one. Yeah. But Danny Jacobson was bananas. No, he was nuts. We, we they, uh, Joey, they had this guy like uh, I hadn't really done that much, and so they're like, "This guy's gonna oversee you, or whatever." But the guy was he, fucking nuts, and and he he didn't know he didn't know what he was doing. Big ego, oh, oh. real big ego. That's what I remember. Oh. About it. I remember he was somewhere Huge. one night, and I knew he was connected to Josh, and I thought to myself, Josh might have a problem with this guy, and I didn't meet him. I didn't shake his hand. Somebody just said that's Danny Jacobson. I'm gonna tell you Big something. Big ego. Yeah. Is I'm, he still around? Yeah. I think he. I think he Dude. did something recently, but I. I don't know. He, I don't keep I'm, tabs. I'm gonna tell you something. I don't think I've ever told you. It might make you feel good. Yeah. So he handed the group that his script. It was way better than I think Danny wanted your script to be. This is me just guessing. And after he read the script. Which we everybody on the team was like, this is a good fucking script. When Danny called and said, we don't need Greg anymore. That's basically how that went. Yeah. And said, we don't need Greg anymore. And I was like, we do actually kind of need Greg. This script is really good. And he was like, yeah. He convinced me. He was like, nah. It's, and I was like, I think it is. Everybody thinks it's really good. He was like, I'm going to write a better script. He went over his resume a couple times, which was at the time really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. So every day we go over to his house. And by the way, he was the first dude that I ever thought, I can't believe how much weed this guy smokes. He had a drawer full of joints and a drawer full of just money. He had a dude that he came, that came over to type for us that he called Clacky. But uh, he didn't tell me his real name. He was like, he's the typewriter guy. So he, he said his name is Clacky. <laughs> we never put a word to paper. We were there for maybe three hours. He had a huge screen TV. He loved the Honeymooners. We watched a lot of honeymooners, <laughs> smoked a lot of weed, you know, nothing. He was like, no, nah, and he was like, no, no, for, but for the meeting with the network we were at, he was, there was a script promised. And he was like, don't worry, I'll bring it, it'll be good, I'll, I'll get it to you, it'll be good, 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 good. He, I think maybe a day before the meeting we're going in, he sends everybody a script. And I get the script for the first time. Because I'm, I'm sitting around, I think I'm waiting for notes. I'm just like, all right, I gave my script to this dude, I'm supposed to show it to, he'll give me notes soon, I guess he's taking too long to write it. And then, or read it, and then uh, on my doorstep, there's a script, and it says written by him, mm -hmm. and then me underneath him, and I'm like, what? The? And I'm looking through it, and I'm like, this is I, I, this isn't anything that I wrote, it, and it went to everybody, network, everybody. It was it, okay. We walk into the meeting the next day. Now, I will tell you this. So Danny had told me that Greg's script was not that good, and I knew that Danny's script was completely different than Greg's, so. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, well, maybe the one that I think is good is bad, and the one that I think is bad is good, because they are completely different. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? We walk into the meeting. The guy, the network guy, is standing. He holds the script above the table. It's me and Danny and my aunt manager, I think. Drops it for effect. Bam! And just looks at Danny and goes, I don't fucking get it at all. <laughs> and, and Danny was like, which part? He was like, the whole thing. He was like, what happened to that other script? His script. And, he was, and, and it was a fucking scramble. It was a scramble. But I was sitting there watching what I thought was because of how excited the network was. And this fucking guy watching what I thought was, oh, this has got a shot to, as the script was dropping, th that was mimicking my career. Just <laughs> boom. Well, I don't fucking get it at all. I was like, oh my God. 
and that was yeah, it. that's crazy. I didn't know that part of it, but um, it was yeah, yeah. What a crazy fucking business. But yeah, I didn't I know, know right? you got the script. I got it on my doorstep. I think they just maybe accidentally sent it to me. Or maybe he was trying to gloat and he was like, you want to read a real script? Yeah. <laughs> maybe. Yo, call, it was. Yeah. And I, call, I called the network. I just picked up the phone call the network. I said, hey, I just got a script. I, don't, I didn't write it. So mm-hmm. just so you know, I don't, I, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Like, and right oh, from okay. there, where'd you go after you wrote that script? For well, Josh? that was a funny thing because that guy too. While we were working on Josh's show, at one point I had two pilots going on, and uh, Josh's and another one. And uh, he said to me, "Oh, you got another pilot, Danny Jacobson?" Said I said, "Yeah." Uh, and he goes, "It'll never go." <laughs> and I go, "All right." Well, that was yes, dear. So that went for <laughs> six years. So that's what I did right after the Josh thing. I did yeah. yesterday for six years. And who was your boss on that one? Danny Jacobson? No, no, no. It was just me. Uh, me and I, I co-created it with a guy named Alan Kirschenbaum. So it was just the two of us created the show together. So what? when you said Danny Jacobson? Well, he was, before this, when I was working with Josh, he told me that the, yesterday he said it'll never get on. He just like in the middle, just for no reason. He just was like, yeah, yeah that show's not going to get on. What did he had done? What did he Mad have Mad about you. Roseanne. That. Oh, both of those. Yeah. yeah. That's why he was so hot. And and he was for the story that I was telling, it was Roseanne was the right tone that we were kind of going for. But you know what's funny about that yes, dear pilot? I remember you sent it to me and I got to read it. And I remember thinking to myself, as I was reading this scene, this scene, this scene is so funny, it could get a show made. And it was that scene with the baby. Oh, with the baby at the end. Yeah, that's the only thing that got that show in the air. Yeah. Dude, that scene i was sh- i would show i was laughing so fucking hard yeah but like it was hysterical yeah but the whole the whole script was a good but I'm like, a joke doesn't work today it's just too easy to manipulate yeah you know video and stuff like that so it's a bit where a baby walks across water because these two idiots they needed to splice the home video and what have you and it's just a visual gag but now wouldn't work yeah you just put a filter on anything you do whatever and stuff but yeah they were trying to get away with taking to the baby to the casino right yeah yeah something like that and so they had video and they were just they tried to replace it with something but they made the baby when they showed the wives to convince them that they weren't at the casino they showed the video of the baby walking on water yeah which they is like a, messed it up which is a dead giveaway you know that they but the the, the, interesting, <laughs> the interesting thing i'll send you i'll send you a it's funnier when you see it i'm just blown away <laughs> that you grow up, you know, you grew up wherever the fuck, Virginia Beach. Yeah. You grew up watching stupid fucking TV shows. And now you've been in the business. Damn, 20 years. You've controlled three or four fucking big time shows. Like, it's nothing for you. It's like, fun. It's nothing. I'm lucky. Like, you think about this shit, you know. It's not just being out here. He's been out here hitting home runs like, you know. But- and 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 we've both been on some sets. Your sets are different than different. anybody's we have a good sets. Time. Different. You have a good, a good group, time. Different. But from the moment you get on the set to the moment you leave, the people on your set are super friendly. Yeah, it's a good group. When and I'm most not, of them been work. We've been working together for yeah. you know ten, fifteen years. It's yeah. really important so. to me that when I know somebody and I go in, that if the director is friends of mine or somebody important in that film is a friend of mine, I go doubly prepared. Yeah. So the first time I booked My Name is Earl, I knew my lines forwards, backwards. I I went in there straight, but with weed in my bag. And I still remember wearing camouflage shorts, but My Name is Earl shoot was like at 11. And I had to go to a meeting. Remember when I was making those stupid Joey Karate videos? Those were not stupid. Yeah, those are amazing. I had to go to some fucking meeting uh, a, a meeting that was a pot company or something. So I wore against all my beliefs, because if you look at any piece of my clothing, there is never a piece of clothing with a pot, anything on it. Uh-huh. I've never done that in my life. I don't like pot clothing. I don't like psychedelic clothing. But for that reason, that shirt was so cool. It was the first original California sign they made of reefer. Mm-hmm. And it was a yellow shirt, and it mixed with the camouflage shorts with white sneakers. You're pimping. <laughs> <laughs> so I take a shirt with me, and I go, I'll go to the meeting with this weed shirt on, 
And then on the drive up to My Name is Earl, I'll switch T-shirts. I was so, they were going to give me money. I got so caught up with the video that I didn't realize I was walking with this weed T-shirt on till I hit the first AD. And she goes, cool shirt, right? And all of a sudden, I'm on the trailer, and I'm like, what am I going to do? Should I? And my wardrobe wasn't in there. So I went walking around, and everybody started going crazy <laughs> over my weed shirt. Like, everybody was like, man, fucking tremendous, cool. And within minutes, I smelled weed. And I go, I'm in a cool fucking set. Yeah. Like, we're okay here. Yeah, you will occasionally we're smell okay that. Here. You also, without a doubt, consistently best food on set. There, the whatever trucks you're doing and whatever money you're spending, you're doing it. Andreas. Oh, so that's Andreas. Damn, does it make good. a big difference? Like, good food on a set makes it big difference. Good food on a set makes it all worthwhile. Like, but it shows you like that you, that the <clears throat> person that you're working for cares a little bit, right? They're they're putting a little extra into it. Hey, you're there so long. Yeah, I mean, you're there for like fourteen you know, hours. You, yeah. there's only a few people who give you cards when you shoot, or give you something. Him, you know, almost gave me something that I cried. I, I still have it. Dick Van Dyke. Is oh, that yeah? right? I shot one of his Lifetime movies, and he gave me a bottle of something, wine, aftershave, something, something with a little note. Thank you for doing it, handwritten. That's the world. Yeah, it was it's great. 469 a yeah. day. Yeah. It yeah. was 469 a day. I played a bookie and I, I cried every time I looked at him. And he finally came to me. He goes, Why are you crying? Did you have a death? And I go, No. You were the first guy I saw when I came from Cuba on TV and I can't <laughs> stop crying. And he was like, Really? That's I go, crazy. I learned how to speak Spanish by watching. He's English. like, Really? English. And he just became my. And then his son was working. It's those little things. Even when you work for Adam, a year later, he sends you like a blanket. I still got my longest yard blanket. Do you? Fuck yeah, I take it to the beach all the time. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, I got know. a guest book uh, towel for you. Okay. Yeah, a little blanket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They it's were giving them out last night. It's crazy how this thing came along called the $100 a day movie. And people really took advantage of that. And I'll never forget one night doing a pilot for AFTRA, a pilot for AFTRA. That was $100 a day. I had two scenes, but I told them I'll do it, but I want cash because my drug dealer. And what time is my call and what time am I getting out because my drug dealer closes at one. You better, <laughs> bitch, better have my money. And I'll never forget going up there the first night and they had nothing. They had nothing. What do you mean they had nothing? They had an apple. Oh, yeah, yeah, granola no, that bars. is, that's yeah. bad. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. Else. Those no. granola bars. And the next night I went up there, and it looked like the Taj Mahal because the after guy was there. And I told the guy, I go, big difference tonight. And he goes, what are you talking about? I go, last night, they didn't, this was a pizza shop. They didn't even have a pizza. And he goes, he gave me his card, and he goes, from now on, you want any set? And they're missing that. Because I started talking to the guy thinking he was Joe Schmo. Yeah. yeah. And the guy took a liking for me. He goes, here, take my card. I work for after Next time you go on a set and there's no food, call me fucking immediately. So I became the guy. The whitey bulger of oh, craft yeah. service. Oh, yeah, I was the whitey bulger of craft <laughs> service. Listen, dog, I did yeah. this movie that the director just recently passed away. Good guy. Oxy's got him or whatever got him. Good Ugh. guy. But I'll never forget, like, they told me when I got the movie that I was going to work 21 days straight. <clears throat> and I was like, I'm cool with that, you know? And the first day, they're like, you know... You pay for your own lunch. You got to go off the set. Mm. And I had just done Spider-Man 2 where they didn't yeah. give you lunch, but they gave you 25 a day, and they really did give you lunch. Yeah. They really did give you lunch. And I and after the second day, I go, can I ask you guys? And there was nothing to eat. I go, can I ask you guys? A quiet? Like it, it started shooting on a Thursday. So Thursday and Friday, they sent this out to lunch. And I went up to the director, and I go, you really want us driving around? If you only have 21 days to shoot this? And he goes, well, that's the budget that we had. So then we had to work Saturday. And Sunday I came in, bro. Now, let me tell you something. I'm shooting something on a Sunday. I'm taking a man or a woman away from her family on a Sunday. I'm going to make it a little special. Yeah. I'm going to make it a little special. Yeah. What I usually do plus some. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make it a, a short day. 
I'm going to make this like a three take a scene day. Let's, yeah. It's Sunday. Why are we fucking around? I'll never forget going there. And at this time, I was very quiet on sets. I was a comic. And I didn't like how comics would act on sets. Like they would try to steal the show. So I learned to shut my mouth. That there was no trailers. It was, you know, it was, and, and they had names in this movie at the time. But the main guy being the father and the fighter. That's how I met him. Okay. He lives right around the corner. The father and the, the fighter. fighter. Now he's on the fucking Broadway doing a play with Denzel got Washington. It, got it, got it. I just bumped into him when he got back from New York. He was in the movie. And I remember going, no disrespect. I've seen you on the show with Dennis Leary. What's going on here? And he was from the Bronx. And he fueled my anger. He was like, I know. They don't have no fucking food. I've been in this business for 20 years. Nobody's ever sent me out for lunch. And this was like, we were out there, like in Scaryville. How many days are you supposed to be on the set? Silmar. 21 in a row. All and out in Silmar? Out in Silmar in a fucking state sound with one. It was it was a it was a true story. It was about a AA meeting, the most popular one on Radford. It's Monday night. Where uh-huh. like, like, that's where if you want to sell a script, you go up there and make believe you're yeah. an alcoholic <laughs> because all the big time <laughs> directors and stuff go in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like that's what seriously. The guy who got this movie made was a guy who Played an Alki, went to that meeting on Mondays. Got it. Oh, no Networking. Shit. And he would network. It was all heavy duty people. Monday nights up there is everybody. The guy from office and the gentleman, do you suck dick? All those, <laughs> the black dude, he's up there. All the top heavy, Hollywood heavyweights go up there yeah. because it's their own little circle. It's a true story. In the 70s, there was a robbery. And the two people went into the meeting and hid in the meeting and, every, and held everybody captive for 12 hours. This guy found out about it, wrote a story about it. So when they got, listen to the weirdest thing, Greg Garcia. When I did the episode with you of Let's Light Them on Fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you look at my tooth, it's black. People think that the makeup department did that. That was my cocaine habit. Okay. The drip was already starting to eat this enamel on the tooth. And I caught it and I gave it, went to a dentist. And the dentist was like, it's going to cost you. It was a day before Christmas. He was going to cost you 1500 to do it. I go, I got 500 He goes, done. I'll see you at 8 in the morning. <laughs> but that, 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 that black tooth was starting to rot. From yeah. The blow. And on that movie, I did the table read over here next to Aro- Aroma. Mm-hmm. On Tonga. Tonga, yeah. There's a little stage in there. I did the table read. And there were some actors in that movie. The chick that played the... The mistress and Goodfellas was at the table read. Uh, the guy from Mission Impossible that died was at the table read. Jack was at the table read. There were some big names. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there going, this, I got to get this movie. This role is me. And they were like, we'll call you. You know, and when the movie, when I signed on, it was $1,000 a day plus 10 for your agent or something. Yeah. They called me a year later. And they're like, well, the movie's on, but it's 100 a day. And we want to take you out to lunch. And they took me to some shitty Chinese joint in the valley. They made me meet him like in Woodland Hills. Yeah. And there was three producers, and they sat me down. This is the first time anybody had ever had the balls to say this to me. We're talking, and they go, you know, we want you for the role, but there's only one problem. We've heard about your drug problem. Oh, and I didn't oh, say shit. nothing. I go, it doesn't affect who I am, whatever. And they're like, listen, we're shooting 21 days in a row, and everybody shoots in every scene. If you're not there, we can't shoot. So before you make a decision and tell us yes, we want you to go home and sleep on it. Yeah. Because we're going to need you for 21 days straight. What year is this? This is 2007. This is when I quit Coke. And I went home and I was furious that my little secret was out. Yeah. I was was ready to fucking hunt down whoever left my secret out. It's obviously you're pale. You got your white yeah. shit coming out of your nose. Yeah. And you're 400 fucking pounds, you know. You're cutting it with sour cream. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, One of my favorite jokes here is, what are you cutting this shit with, butter? Butter. And it wasn't even my joke. <laughs> What's her name gave it to me? She stole it. Who? And then the guy gave one after me and I had to spit in his face at the improv. <laughs> then he died of cancer. But before he died, Richard I had Jenny? To, no, before he died, I had to do a movie with him and sit in the room with him all night. And we kept looking at him. Oh, who was it? 
One night I'm at the comedy store doing this joke about cocaine, and I'm 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 snorting coke every night. And one night I forget what her name is. Who's I love her to death. Who's Luca Polanka's girlfriend? Oh, I don't know. Wife. I don't remember. Tammy Pascatelli. The Tammy Pascatelli. Tammy Pascatelli comes up to me in a sweetheart of a way, and she goes, "Joey, you should say right. you're cutting your coat." Your coke with butter. Yeah. So nine out of ten for twenty years, Greg. I don't care who the fuck you are. You come up to me with a tagline, I'll tell you, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I won't really use it. Yeah. I'll think about it first. Something made me use it. Yeah. You know? It was funny. It's funny. Something made me use it. That's why. And a fucking month later, I'm getting threats from this comic, this old school Jewish comic. But I stole his joke, and I go, bro, I wasn't even around. When you were doing that joke, in fact, he kept on it and kept on it. And every time he'd come to the improv, he kept on it. I'd see him at commercial auditions, and he would say shit to me. And at that time, I had my little addiction. God forbid, I smack you and I go to jail for 24 hours. I go crazy. I just want to snort coke. Sticks and stones will break my bones. If I stole your joke, I stole your joke. And I didn't steal his joke. I swear to mercy, I didn't but steal his joke. And one night, I went into the improv. I had like $18 too short to get a 20 when I would smack you in the fucking mouth. Remember at the improv and the old improv, the checks would be out. Yeah. So you could go through the checks. And the Remember how checks? Remember how many checks Drew Carey had there? Yeah, Drew Carey. Just sitting I, there. I would, oh, my God. We would just sit there yeah. for, oh, my God. We would God. just take two Drew, Drew Carey <laughs> yeah. checks, deposit 30 bucks. I went in there like with $18, $2 short of a 20 and I had to go up on stage, and I found out they weren't paying me that night. It was one of those deals. And I walked in there, and that guy came up to me. And he squared up on me, and he goes, you stole my joke, dog. We're going to end this tonight. And I, before, I just looked at him and spit in his fucking <laughs> face, and it almost knocked him over. He went backwards. He couldn't believe, nobody's ever spit in my face. Well, come close to me, and I'll knock you out. <laughs> and I went on stage, and he created a campaign. That I stole his fucking joke. But by the way, but by the All way. All this shit, but it's no. It's not, by the way, it's a joke. So the odds of somebody else. Well, he was a coke fiend. Yeah, in the set, and, and that's the, the thing. comedy store in those days. As I'm sure so somebody he, else in the 80s wrote it wrote too. Wrote it too. Yeah. So he's, we had this war at the improv. They have to hold him back. They got to hold me back. I pushed the manager, the whole fucking deal. I get suspended for 30 days, whatever. And I got a call from Nick Swanson. And he goes, do you want to be in this movie I'm doing? I go, yeah, I'll be down there Saturday. Guess who's in the trailer next to me? No. Yeah, the guy is spitting his face. Oh, no. And we're oh. in the same scene together. No. Me, him, Don Johnson, and some other guy. What movie is that? So in between takes, what's the worst movie? What poor kid, Rotten Tomatoes, almost went under. Grandma's Boy? Yeah. Like no, it wasn't I, Grandma's Boy. It was the, the porn one. The right? porn one. Nikki Walters, whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Grandma's yeah. Boy is a good movie. I was in that, and that got rotten fucking tomatoes. Like they, they almost gave him his money back. He couldn't uh, even the Bank of America no. wouldn't cash his check. They was <laughs> not cashing his check. That movie's terrible. Like he poor. But I go in there on a Saturday morning, and my scene is with this guy. Are you supposed to like each other? And I went up to Nick Swanson like a man, and Adam, and I go, "Come here for a second. I told Adam, and Adam like he loves all that shit. <laughs> Adam saying loves all that shit. I'm like Adam. Wait, what's the scene though? Do you guys like each other? Do you hate scene, each other? A uh, 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 promoter is showing us his movie, and we have to agree to it. And so like, you're buddies. And yeah, the, like yeah, you're so buddies. It's yeah, me, yeah, you, and partners. You, me, and him are producers. Yeah. And Lee is showing us porn to sell, and the movie ends, and I look at you, and I'm like, I can't even see her clit. Like the agent called me and said, I can't even read the lines to you. They're so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a I had to walk in with Don Johnson and sit next to this fucking moron and the whole time he was talking shit like once they broke us for lunch he kept telling Nick Swanson that guy stole my joke and at one point I had to tell him at that point he he had a guy like working with him cause Did, he was, was he telling me. people you spit in his face oh yeah he's got no class he spit in my face <laughs> and I'll spit in your fucking face again. Keep it up, cocksucker. I was crazy, you know. I, yeah. And then, yeah. The guy, and then the guy got like throat cancer and died. Good lord. So I feel yeah. So how good do I feel? What right happened now? to the, the 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 woman that told you to say that? I went. She got in the middle and she stuck up for me and you know whatever. Yeah. And then, but the guy didn't believe her. The guy just had it out. The guy just wanted to pick a fight with. Yeah. Me. So that's it. He gotcha. died of cancer. 
So wait, were you wishing cancer on him? Like, no, okay. I didn't wish nothing for. I, all I wanted was for him to leave me the fuck alone. Okay. You know, he went on. Remember, he went on last comic towards the end. He did okay. He was an old guy. Uh... And he went on last comic the one year. And he came in sixteenth, so now that gave him some plug. So I walk into the improv, and he wants to fucking pick a fight with me. And I'm like, dog, I just want to go home and pick up my 20 and go home and snort with the cats. I don't want to bother nobody. I don't want to bother nobody. You know, I went to the, the comedy store. I went to the, you know, the bathrooms in the main room? Yeah. I haven't been in, in those bathrooms apparently since when we used to. That used to, the main room used to be empty. The woman's bathroom. Yeah. The woman's bathroom. That main room. Used, no, 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 the men's room. When you go in that through that little hallway and you take a, a left right away. And that between the original room, yeah, yes. and the, but that room used to be the main room used to be empty most nights. But and but that was the bathroom that everybody went to do coke. And I hadn't been in that bathroom since because I don't use the main room bathroom because it was it's <laughs> it used to be basically set up for us to do coke. It, those it bathrooms, nice little, little yeah, it, and... because nobody was using that bathroom except those, me and you and probably Schubert and the back piano in the main room oh. that was for cocaine. Yeah. yeah, but I would go back there by myself and I would hear fucking spirits, so I would not snort coke back there. <laughs> but the basement too, dude. And then no, but I never went to the basement to snort coke. There's no What's reason to the go basement? to the basement. Hell, the hell, <laughs> hell. That's just yeah. in the basement. Yeah, and yeah. And the woman's bathroom is the best at the comedy store in the main room because they have a little couch you can sit her down. You could sit it down and rub her back and let her tell you about her problems while you do some cocaine and then suka la mink. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Next thing you know, you're naked in there. The fucking, it's, they really do. They have like a little couch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The bathroom that brings me, I've been going to the comedy store for 21 years. Holy shit. And nothing brings me a better memory than the belly room bathroom. Josh at the time had a child and he was involved with this woman that was how we didn't make a show for her at the time. Oh my God. A reality show. Yeah. She was the real deal. She yeah. had everybody by the balls and she was a gorgeous woman. She was 40 pounds overweight and she was still, I remember her coming in a month after she had Jacob into the union and every man in the room looked at her. She was voluptuous. She had a face. So her and Josh are going through some stuff, and one night Josh, you know, Josh just has, at that time, Josh had a weird sense of humor. He had a different type of sense of humor. It was a little darker. And yeah. So I guess she It gets, was a little darker, yeah. <clears throat> she gets home one night at 6 in the morning, and Josh yells at her, and she has a heart attack and takes fucking 20 Xanaxes, and she falls over, and Josh is like, you're going to die because I can't pick you up, and, you know. <laughs> Like Josh was just saying nasty things to her. Then the ambulance came and they tried to pull her out. And Josh is like, I'm telling you, you're not going to get her out that door. Because she was a voluptuous woman. Like just tremendous knockers. She was big, big face. And she didn't give a fuck. No, she didn't she care. She would wear a mini skirt. She didn't care. She didn't care. No. Yeah. Like you have to give her. Like if, if I have to put a list of most memorable people in my life, she's in the top 20 at that point. Whatever happened between them was whatever. But for that time. She really would make you laugh from time to time. Not from time to time. She was funny. She was funny. She yeah. was funny. There was no doubt she was funny. I remember she used to take $20 out of his ATM oh, machine every day. God. Listen, if you want to piss Josh, I've always said that <laughs> they should do another fear factor and take a Jew and hold him back, like hold him <laughs> and like put a gun to their father, <laughs> to their father's head, but then take the ATM machine and take the thing and take their money out and cut the 20s in half. <laughs> And then watch a Jew just go crazy. Like, ah! She would take a 20. She j she talked Josh into taking a, into her giving him a credit card with her name on it. Like, so they could split the household yeah. duties. But she was taking on a 20 for lunch every day. She did clerical work. I could spit in his face and he wouldn't get as mad at that 20. He got every so mad day. at that 20. You remember, that you remember that? One of his best bits of his life was about that 20. He said, you know what that's like? That's one forty a week. That's two eighty a month. That's five sixty a month. That's you know how many you know how many, you know how many turkey burgers I could eat. He had like a bit about it. Oh, I would so say to him, and then I would ask him for a twenty. 
just to fucking destroy him. Yeah. <laughs> like, because that's the lie. He would go on the computer. In those days, you didn't even go on the computer. Because here's, the, here's the, the fucking thing. Machine yeah, here's the thing. And find out you were broke. Like, you didn't even know you were broke till you got there. But, like, but you, Joe, you're, you're missing the bit. The, I was making $1,000 a month. A month. So, so $20 a day. Was you? It was a lot of fucking yeah. money. And he you was getting I mean? pissed. His uh, face was getting red. Like, I'm eating turkey burgers and fucking beans. And she's not uh, shay. $20 she, a she would day order she fucking would to go at this clerical job. Job. And like, she would bring stuff home, and that's what she was eating. And I was like, and, you know. and everybody was tormenting him. The brother, the brother couldn't pay rent, but he ordered every night from what's that place? Uh, uh, Sanku Chicken. Sanku okay. Chicken, the fucking mix bowl. It smelled like ten Hindus in the apartment. That's when I would leave. I don't give a fuck. I gotta go. And then one night, Yo. like, he was getting tortured from all over. I'm living with him, mooching off him. The chick is taking twenty a day. <laughs> And then there's long distance calls to Compton. And the only person who knows oh black God. people is his brother. You remember that the only shit. Per- Do you remember I, that wa- shit? I walk into an argument in the house one night. And he's like, I didn't call Crenshaw. It was because Crenshaw. It was Crenshaw. He yeah. had a, and that day, they charge you. Yeah, you, you had to pay. Yeah, anything you outside pay, that area. You had to pay yeah. like 55 cents. You get that cents. bill and you just see like 10 cents, 12 right. cents. Yeah. Just add it up. Yeah. Yeah. So he had a black girlfriend in Crenshaw. And I'll never forget Josh going like, wait a second, wait a second, Jonathan, you're trying to sit there. I'm walking into this like excited. I got a $20 bag of Coke. I'm taking Josh with me. Malia's going to babysit. You know, we're out. And Josh is like, so you're trying to tell me you got, a, you got a black girlfriend, but you're not calling Crenshaw. And he would sit there and go, "Yo, just because I have a black girlfriend doesn't know I know any other black and, people. And, like, and it was just fucking hysterical. Do you remember the other part? I go, I go. you teach at Crenshaw High School. Yeah, it was hysterical. It's that's not be- you. You're not making that call. He was like, still, nah, it's still not me. And I'm like, okay, well, that's a pretty strong denial. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, but I, but I was the craziest. Sorry. Yeah, he would the, deny it to this, to day. this day. He would deny it to the, which right. I respect. Yeah. You but got, like, I mean, yeah, once, you, once, you, once he's in, he's in. But you know what? Here's the thing is that like when there's a lot. Okay. A friend of mine just came to my show in Boston. And when we were like 14 years old, there was one of these big town tennis tournaments. And we were in it and we ended up playing each other. And you got to referee your own match. He's been cheating the whole time. Whatever. So, <laughs> match point. I serve. He swings and he misses. And he goes, do over. And I'm like, what do you mean? And he goes, do over. I go, why? What do you need to do over for? He goes, you didn't see that butterfly? I go, what? And he goes, that butterfly. I go, I didn't want to hit it with my racket. We got to do a do over. <laughs> and I his name's Anton. I go, Anton, there's only two of us here. One of us is lying. Like, we were both looking at where the ball was. How can you look at my face and tell me there was a butterfly? And he just, you know, he just goes, do over, butterfly. And I was like, because I'm like, he's never going to, I know guys like that are just never going to break. They're never going to say there was no butterfly. Yeah. And there was only two of us there. What a crazy. How'd you do on the do over? I beat the fuck out. What a crazy argument. And then we leave. So this one night. Malia's been going out and not coming home till six. And Josh is on his last straw. And Josh yells at her one night and she eats a bunch of Xanax. And she she doesn't she can't even write the note. And she passes out and Josh has to call 911. I go over there. Josh calls me and says, Did you see her? I go, I thought I saw I saw her like at two. You always saw Malia. Yeah. But I didn't see her at six. I had no money in those days to be snorting cooked till six. And if I had it, I'd be by myself. So he goes, last night she ate a bunch of pills. I don't know. I go, where is she? In the hospital, they pumped her stomach. A cheeseburger came out, spare ribs, you know. She ate at some fucking $20. She had a lunch. good lunch that day. <laughs> she had I'll a good lunch that she day. She ate good. So it's like, it's Thursday morning. With, it's Tuesday morning when this happens. So when you try to commit suicide, they hold you for 48 hours. Like there's a legal yeah. hold on you. Mm-hmm. Well, Wednesday night, I'm outside. Standing in the hall at the comedy store outside where my name is. And who do I see walking into the comedy store? <laughs> but Malia. And she walks right up to me like nothing happened. Like I didn't hear about what happened. Yep. Gives me a hug and says, where's the dude with the coke? And I go, you just. Like I tried to explain to her. Like you just. <laughs> uh, and she goes, no, no, no. I got money. So she goes. She she knew the guy. She gets the packages. She goes, where can we do a bump? I go, we have to go upstairs, Malia. And the whole walk on the way up, 
I'm trying to get out, like, what happened, but I don't have the balls to ask her. Yeah. So we finally get to the bathroom. She empties the whole five packages out. Like, it's just a fucking little mound. And she's chopping it up with an ATM card. And I finally... Whose name was on that ATM card? <laughs> she finally... <laughs> she takes a gram, and a, it was like... Chewy would give you 620s for 100 in those days. So it was like a gram... It was like a gram point two. That's a lot of coke. And she cut it into two lines. And I looked at it. I go, Malia, before you do that, can I ask you a question? Weren't you just in an insane asylum? <laughs> and she goes, yeah. And I go, why are you out? And she goes, I talked them out of it. She did. And she said something to me. She goes, I talked them out of it. I'm not crazy. And with that, she just did the whole line of coke. Yeah. And that is every time I go to the belly room to do a show, that memory comes back to me of her going, and looking at me and going, I'm not crazy. Yeah. You just yeah. did a fucking half a gram in one line, and you're sitting there telling me you're not crazy. You guys should so have done a show memory. about this. Yeah. That's my memory That's your of opening the scene right there. Every time I go to the belly room, I sit in that booth, and I still remember that lady's bathroom. That's when there was no shows in the belly room. Yeah. There was nothing. During the week, it was just the original one. So you could snort coke in the main room or the belly room till your heart was good. And which is upstairs? Belly room. Belly, belly room. room. She, yeah, man, she, uh, you didn't take the card away. Here's the crazy thing. She was the one making money. We had decided because she, I was like, I'm going to have to go out at night and perform. So I, I, I can't work during the day and go out at night. I'll take care of the kids. You get a job and then I'll go out at night, which she preferred anyways. Yeah. So that was easy. It just, you know, she was doing coke at work though, dude. Yeah, that was with that wrong. dude, what you oh, do? Man. What what, what a job boss. did she, she have? A boss. That's yeah, right. A yeah, boss. Yeah, and one of yeah yeah. And a girl. They had a boss. She yeah. had a boss that was into coke, and then she, the boss was buying coke. That's how she was getting some of her coke. Yeah, I think so. And what From, did they do? She worked in an insurance office something, or something, something like weird. that. Yeah, something like that. She worked maybe in an insurance office, but it was, I mean, it wasn't my healthiest relationship. I hope not. No. And then, <laughs> no, 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 no. It gets better. Then Josh Wolf launched a company, a peanut butter and jelly corporation. Yeah. He I've heard about it. Yeah, I, I still owe it $250. Yeah. <laughs> At I least. got an outstanding tab because he had you who's. Yeah. You ate the shit out of those you who's. He would come back yeah. and go, there's three you who's missing. Yeah. Oh, I can't. You you know. And you who's. I can drink you who's like a motherfucker. I'm surprised it's only three, to be honest. No, oh, he was three killing. a day. You just had was, a cooler and you moved around town, right? Or With a page, man. Yeah. And then we would make the sandwiches in the apartment. And we got shut down by the health board. Really? Yeah, because... You can't you, make sandwiches at your house. No, sandwiches. on the ground. My kids were putting the, I, I'm surprised you got found out. Uh, we were doing... Like, we were doing all right. You're for, doing well. Yeah, not well, but en enough... Like, when you're making $1,000 a month, if you add an extra yeah. $400... That's a lot. Yeah. You know? So, and I was trying to get air conditioning for my Saturn. You remember that fucking car? It had no air conditioning, and the St. Bernard used to ride in it. So you could either ride with the windows down, but the air, there was like a tornado of hair. Yeah. You know? And so you would get out and look like a, a Wookiee. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or you could roll up the windows, but if you rolled up the windows, it's hot as fuck. Oh, yeah. And, and you're so, in there with the St. Bernard. And the kids, sometimes I think some of them got so hot, they just passed out. <laughs> like sometimes I'd be sweating in the car and I'd look in the back and they were just all asleep. I'm like, man, I hope I'm not doing bad shit to their brains right now. <laughs> One time we took, that, <laughs> we, took that, we took that car to like Havasu. Oh, my God. And there was, tell them dad couldn't be covered in hair. <laughs> yeah. You got you to save this for one of your TV shows. Yeah. We took that car to like Havasu, no air conditioner. It's 114, oh. the last hour. We got oh the sunroof God. open and the windows open. Just living on warm air and all the fucking flies and mosquitoes. Yeah. And there's a little Visine bottle there. When we get there, we're stoned to the gills. And Funko here decides to put the Visine in his eyeballs. It was 108 degrees. Oh, oh Jesus. My He's God. like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Oh. And then I had the handicap room, you remember? And I didn't have a shower with a head. I had to sit down in the shower and it shot water at my chest. 
and I, there was a snake in my fucking room. It was, and that gig wasn't Brian Dunkelman with us. That we had wasn't Brian Dunkelman with all, us. First of all, you ready, Lee? Because Lee's getting into comedy. I just want to drop it on him. All right. It was one fifty for the night. Yeah. And you had to drive down there, and you got one fifty. So you already lost eighty in gas. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's four. So it was five down and five back. You had to go over the London Bridge. Yeah, it was. A, once you hit the London Bridge, <laughs> yeah. 150. 150. That last weekend we went, we got them for 250 because it was Dirty White People weekend. That's right. It was the weekend when everybody goes down there, they jump from boat to boat, and you can see the chlamydia of oh, Did we have to? It's disgusting. Did we have to judge something? We had to judge and do, and we like beached out on it. The funny thing was that. What the, did you judge? Like a bikini contest and something to, yeah. stupid. But that was an ugly weekend because yeah. his cousin Scott had a party on that street. Scott was living with your other brother, and they were living in Hollywood towards Mimi's Cafe up the corner type by that neighborhood, by the Jewish neighborhood with the bagels. Oh, no, Gary. Gary and Gary, Gary, and, Gary and, and Danny. And Danny. No, it was Scott, I think. And then they were living there because we went over there one night and we listened to Santana. And we went there one night, and the cops came at 2 in the morning. We were all gacked up, and Scott went to the door. It was like 30 of us, and Scott went to the door, and he knew the cops. He was on party of five. He's signing autographs, and the cops went away. We had to be in Havasu at 12. Uh, so it was 2 in the morning. We got fucking 6 grams of blow. We're like, what are we going to do? You want to snort till 6? Let's just drive all night. And we left. We stopped somewhere. We got a bunch of beers. Carol, the stripper. Oh, my <coughs> God. Me, you, Brian Dunkelman. It had to be like eight of us, and three of us were performing. Yeah. We were getting four hotel rooms or three hotel rooms, so somebody had to share. Yeah, you could. Room. And with $150. $150. I think they pay, They only paid for one meal, right? When you were performing in the bar. Yeah. And so you got it. And if you drank, you blew your money. Yeah, yeah. that was it. Like if you found you the break even. At what that do you mean, yeah. if you drank? There's no way you're going to one of those gigs. And it was one of those gigs. It, there was a lot of those gigs. In fact, I just watched that movie where you go to the gig and the waitress would ask you what you wanted. Uh -huh. And you're like, I'll take a beer and bring Lee a beer. And all of a sudden, at the end of the night, you get paid and they give you a tab. And you're like, what's this for? Oh, you're drinking. And you're like, I, I, the waitress asked me if I wanted something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I thought you were the guest. I thought you were the guest. And they're like, nah, it was like the Blues Brothers. Nah, we got to pay for our beer right here. Yeah. You know, like, you got to pay. Your, your, your pay was 250 but the band drank 280 So I'd appreciate the cash. <laughs> <laughs> like, that used to happen. Like, I did this room one time in St. Louis with Jody Furtick. Holy shit. She was the feature act. And I think they were paying her like 500 bucks or 400 bucks it was a yoda room but she's a fucking boozer and i kept telling her buy a bottle at the bar and drink it in your room not her she would be at the bar and i remember sunday night she was crying and i go what are you crying about and she goes i owe them 72 dollars <laughs> i go what do you think those fucking beers were for free yeah you know a bar will give you two beers usually you two if you don't abuse them they give you two drink yeah. tickets once they see you're an alky, they're like, turn on the light, bro. Yeah. That's seven dollars of cocktail. We don't give a fuck. There's no there's no comic discount. The yeah. last club I went to, I forget where it was, where they said uh, so you get soft drinks for free and everything on the menu half off. And I was like, What about bottled water? And they said, No. That you gotta pay for water, ha soft drinks, and where was that? But I said to the guy, right when he said it to me, I said this will be the last time I perform here. It was the first and last. But he was like, why do you say that? I was like, that's not, man. That's not like, I have to pay for water? And he goes, well, I have to pay for it. I said, yeah, but you know, you're the only club in the country that makes people pay for water. And he was like, that can't be true. I'm like, that is so fucking true. There's a, there's a refrigerator filled with water when you walk into a room. But dude was stood fast to it. Soft drinks, half off the menu. It was crazy. <laughs> he wouldn't even, like, not even a drink. If I was, if I was like, can I get a shot Saturday night late and we can do a shot with the crowd? Charge me for it. It was fucking crazy. But I never, I can't, like, you know, here's the thing. When I go to on a gig, the hotel you put me up in tells me a lot about how you want our relationship to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. That very first time you go, 
if they didn't spend the 20 extra dollars that I know <laughs> it would cost to put me in just a one step up, so that's an extra $60, three nights. If they don't want to spend that, then that tells me something about, okay. Yeah. This you know is, how you're perceived this, by, by how you're being treated. And this right is away. how we're starting the relationship. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so th- a lot of times I'm like, okay. And that also judges, that tells me down the road, like you sometimes you have club owners. Sometimes you have club owners ask you for favors. And there's some guys I'll do anything for. And there's some guys that no. Yeah. Because right off the bat, they told you what they think of you. You know what I mean? Yeah, you I'm sure that happens up. in your you build well, that happened, relationship. It happened right in your bat. thing when you first got yes deal. Yeah, people treated you a lot different than what they treat you now. Yeah. Oh yeah, sure. And now they look at you and go, "Hmm, maybe yeah. I should have been nice to him when he was on yes deal." <laughs> yeah, but I also came up. up like I started as a, you know the lowest uh, getting scripts and lunches and all that stuff. So for the most part, people were nice to me. So. As soon as I, you know, when I got the opportunity to be nice, you got, you got to. Was there ever a set you were on when you were at that spot where you were, that, that set, that person ran a set where you were like, that's how I'm going to run a set? Um, I mean, I think I took, I tried to take <coughs> the best things from different people because you see things because nobody's perfect at it and somebody come work for me and go, okay, well, I'm going to do that, but I'm not going to do that. You know, right. and that as you work for people running shows, that's how you kind of do it. You could, it's not like just good and bad. You just collect, you see what's working and what's not working. And then you kind of adapt all that. I think. Why do you think then some people make their sets so tense? I don't know. I it's don't know. so crazy to me because you can walk onto a set and then people are just n- they're not happy to be there. I guess if they're, you know, a lot of times people get behind on these sets, you know, they get they get behind and now it's super stressful and you don't know if you're going to have something next week and blah, blah. And I can't, I, I cannot ever let myself get anywhere near being behind or I'll feel that anxiety then. So I'm like, no, I got to, I got to stay ahead of this. And then I think it's, it from there, you can be more relaxed. I think a lot of it sometimes is that. Well, you're, dude, you're up, you're no, you're up at like four or five in the morning sometimes writing. Yeah, sometimes I like to get an early start. Yeah, yeah. Like, you, you, I remember I asked you, because you don't live necessarily close to your office. And I was like, how's traffic? And you're like, I don't know, I'm in my car at 4 a.m. I'm yeah, like, what? Yeah. You get there pretty quick. In there at 4 a.m. So just to write. It, but, but you're there six hours before anybody else. Yeah, th- those on the on those single camera shows, I did that because because uh, then I could look at what they did the day earlier in the in the um, writers' room, and I can read through it and put notes and whatever else, and then give it back to them when they come in, and then I can go to set because you can't be in two places at one time. And a lot of times, somebody's running a show, they want to be in the room and they want to be on the floor watching, you know, the, uh, the the acting and everything, making sure that it's getting getting done the way they want it to, and then people in the room are just waiting, and so then and that's when you get these terrible hours. So I would just get up early and. Go back and forth. That is it. So because in writer's room, sometimes you're waiting for the you, you know, whoever you are. Yeah, unless you have instructions yeah, or you know yeah, what's yeah. going on. Then you can but if you're waiting for home. notes sometimes, it's like you can just be sitting in front of your at your desk just waiting for hours. Yeah, yeah. sure. So you get up early, do the work, and so because you want to get everybody. Again, though, dude, not keeping people there for 16 hours if you don't have to makes people happier to show up to fucking set. You know what I mean? Yeah, and also like I noticed like some writing writing rooms, you go in there and you don't know what you're doing all day long, so you just fuck around because you don't know you're gonna be here till two in the morning anyway. You know it, and whereas otherwise, if you just give them instructions at the beginning of the day, they're like, all right, as soon as we get this done, we're home. So then they see an end, you know, and they have better hours because they get out of there. They don't stand around while people tell stories for like you know four hours or anything like that. They're like, all right, let's get going. Let's get going. There's not as much gambling with dice in the corner or now, what whatever you, else. Now, we what do you do now? Now, so now you sit. You wait to see if you get picked up. Do you do any writing at all? What do you have? I'll probably proactively be starting to think about season three of the guest book, just hoping that, you know, something comes of it. And the good thing about that show is every episode is different. So even if I come up with like three or four stories for season three and they don't do it, I could use those stories someplace else because they're just, you know, they're just random standalone stories. How many stories did you write for this season? Uh, Ten. I did ten scripts. Well, like, how, but how many did you have? Oh, three, and, oh. Yeah. How like, many did like, were, how how big is your catalog? Oh, oh from from the stories that uh, I left in guest books, only three of them uh, this season are in season two, and then the rest of them I just sit down and come up with. Do you like it more 
writing these that are, are standalone episodes, but they also have through lines. They do a little bit. They have through lines. Bit. They yeah, have through you lines. Watch the whole thing. Yeah, they through have lines. through lines. So, do you prefer that, or do you like uh, writing the show like Earl? That kind of had definitely had a through line. I like right now. I like this one. I like this one because it, just the fact that you can do absolutely anything from one episode to the next episode. Yeah, you know. And, and, and then, you know, then they're all written, too, and you can be shooting them, and, and you're thinking, like, oh, okay, like, we got to this one episode. Joey, Joey was in, Joey's in two episodes, and the first one he was in, I didn't know he was going to be in the one later, and then I was writing that part, and then I gave him a little backstory so it would make sense. Well, let me and ask so, you this. What are we going to do? Because I'll put up 500. Yeah. But we got to figure out a way to let people guess what I did Here's gonna be the pro- episode one. Here's going to be the problem with this. They aired it as a sneak peek last night. They showed me already yeah. doing it? Yeah. So so, so they showed it. The, the real premiere is next Tuesday on the 23rd, but they did show something after baseball, like way after baseball, after the post game. Uh, they put it on. nobody said nothing to me. I saw like one thing on Twitter. They, somebody had a frozen screen. Oh, me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. I don't even think it's like really a spoiler to say what you're doing. No, no, because don't nobody. Say it. All right, I won't say Fuck it. Them. Make all right, them okay, all right, all right. I'm proud of my work. Yeah, you, know you should saying? be proud of your work. How many? How many takes? Work. I don't know. We just laughed. Three more than I wanted. <laughs> we, just, we just laughed. I oh just my laughed. god, we had a blast. I just laugh. I love. You know, I did a movie with, I did an all star movie, about that Howard Hughes guy. Flies, whatever, yeah. you know, and it had like Alec Baldwin and everyone else did it. And I gotta tell you something, that was the most uncomfortable set. Really? Just it tense? Was, it was just too much, too much. Like, oh, once you have too many stars in the movie, see what the name of the movie is. Wait till you see this lineup. What was your first one, Basketball? Yeah. I remember when you booked that. And I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah, I remember when you booked that, but they were so big at the time. They were just blown up. Oh, South my Park. God. When, when you, who else was in it? Alec Baldwin? Yeah, Alec Baldwin. It's just look on the IMDb Joe Diaz. No hey, title. Greg, okay. you give me water. It didn't yeah. show for me. When you booked that first movie, were you, um, did you have time to enjoy it and be excited about it, or did you get nervous right away? <laughs> Greg Garcia, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. You have no idea not to know what you're doing. Yeah. So was it instant so anxiety? The first thing I booked was an industrial. I booked a movie in Colorado that's still floating around. That won an award. I hit a, I throw a guy in the trunk of a car. It was based off me. The girl knew me. Her father knew me. That's funny. So she wrote like a so Do you have, Did you get a copy no. of it? No. Well, 2015. Oh. 2016, fly away, something. And uh, I went to, I told these guys that I came here to shoot a CBS pilot that started with six pages of dialogue. Yeah. And every time I would go to rehearse, I would lose another page until I shot the pilot where I was basically a deaf mute because <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah. There was no formal acting. There was no... F- Just thrown right into the fire. Right into... I took uh, whatever in high school, improv, my freshman year. That's it. I didn't know nothing. And then I didn't know about acting classes, 200 a month. I'm snorting coke. I got no time for that. 200 a month, and then I booked basketball. I remember. I went to NYPD Blue for a guest star audition as a Coke dealer, nine pages. And I remember they stopped me after three, and they were like, That's great. Thank you for coming in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it was a Bosco building, so it was all, it's a mile walk in those days. In those days, if you read for NYPD Blue, you had to read in the Bosco building all the way. They must have hated Stephen Bosco. <laughs> Look up Alec Baldwin. I did. It's not on your thing. I right, look up Alec Baldwin. Okay. And look up what movies he did in 2016, whatever. You had to it's be excited for him when he got that movie. Was. Oh, we were all really excited when he got that movie. It was 5500 a week. Yeah. It and but they were because they were that was right around also, right after that fucking VHS with Santa fighting Jesus. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That was yeah. their VHS. And then South Park was like 
crushing it. And they came out with that movie, and we were all like, oh, he's going to be a star. Yeah. I wanted for NYPD Blue, and as I was walking down the hallway, as soon as I hit the end, Libby Goldstein opened the door. And it was such a coincidence that I had a shirt. Paris can wait. With string, no. Oh, with strings on it. And she goes, are you here for the audition? Yeah. And she gave me something, and I read. she goes, you got two minutes. And I read it, and I went back and read it, and I didn't think of that. And I was living in what's now the, when people come from other countries. The hostel? Uh, the hostel. It used to be a $6 hotel on Schrader. Yeah. In the middle. I was staying there, and, I, <laughs> and it was like the phone call from Rocky. Like, is there anybody in the building named Diaz, Joe Diaz? And I had to run down to the payphone, and it was my manager. And he's like, hey, man, you booked uh, uh, basketball. It's three weeks, 5500 a week. But you got to join SAG at twelve fifty. Yeah, I'm like, who's got twelve <laughs> fifty? And I called Danny Robinson, and I told oh. him my dilemma. He wasn't even my agent. Still doing it, by the way. And he called. Yeah, he's got the hottest act in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. Tiffany Still Haddish. doing it. Still doing it. Oh yeah. How yeah. crazy is that? Good for him. And he had. He called the production company and made him pay for the SAG. And I went on there. I've told this story a thousand times. I was pure fucking jumped up. Yeah. So they had roller skates on the set. And they had a truck full of roller skates. So I went to the truck one day and I saw a size 14. And I just took it and walked out like nothing. Put it in my car. And I stopped at Swiss Chalet, one of those hard, one of those. And I walked in and I go, I got these here for Christmas. <laughs> and, then, and the guy's looking at me. There was no computers then. There was no beep. Yeah. There was none yeah. of that shit. Yeah. The guy's like, I don't think we had them here. Maybe you could have bought them in another store. Let me look it up. And the guy comes back and he goes, I think they're like two eighty nine. Would you take cash? <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah. <laughs> so pretty soon I was going on the set every day and just stealing a pair of roller skates yeah. every day. The ones that they would give me to go. I would go get and the go box. back to the same place. The different there was a couple okay. of different ski shops. I re I remember the oh day God. you told me the story about getting Christmas presents at Target, because before computers, he would pick up like a big blanket, and you know something else, and then he would walk them up and bring it right to the return counter and be like, "I got those as a gift." There you go. And then, then that's way how he'd buy the Christmas before, presents. Way before the system came along. Yeah. So one year I was broke. I never forget going into Toys R Us with nothing. That's what it was. Toys R Us. With my daughter, and I would just take like a three hundred dollar stencil, yeah, and go up to the front and go, "I got this for Christmas." And they would go, "You have a receipt?" No, because from December fifteenth to, to Valentine's Day, they'll honor everything. Yeah, a receipt. Yeah, it's gifts. What yeah, they're gifts. Do? We definitely bought it here, you know. But I would do. I would get that Jeffrey money. <laughs> I remember Christmas yeah. Day. Walk, I walked in there with no money, and I walked out of there with a bike, like yeah. a toy. Just she's returning like, things that never left the store. Like, well, it didn't affect them. I mean, they're doing great. <laughs> yeah. She's like, Dad, you're, you're a magician. <laughs> I was doing it to so many people in 95. Like, I used to hang out in front of a Kmart and wait for people to walk out for receipts to blow. Oh, that's right. And I'll never forget one time I found the receipt for a four hundred dollar lawnmower. Yeah. So I couldn't go back in there and get it. So I drove to Longmont, Colorado, to the Kmart there. Went right up with the went to an assistant in the lawn department. Go, hey, where's this lawnmower? At? And he goes, it's right there. And I went right over and I hauled it over <laughs> the thing. And I go, my wife just got me this. I got one. Here's the receipt. I got one. And he gave me four hundred plus tax, and I walked out of there. <sighs> I was doing that everywhere. Yeah, oh it was goodness. like a, and then it, the first people to suspect me, I was doing it on the road. Yeah, I was doing it on triple runs. I would go to triple runs and steal a tent, and then put, put it back, and they give me one seventy nine for the fucking tent. Plus tax. <laughs> yeah, so I was bringing back tents, it and I got blew a my mind. They finally you told caught me. Quite a side they hustle. Yeah, they blew caught my me mind. in Idaho Falls, and how they, they catch you? They caught me because they caught me on the computer. Okay. They caught me after they gave me the cash. They arrested me. They gave me a ticket. And then they let me loose. I never went back. So there's a warrant in Idaho Falls. All right. And I got a call this week to go to Blackfoot, no, Idaho, Idaho yeah. to do a movie. And the guy <laughs> goes, you're going to have to fly into Salt Lake, then into Idaho Falls. And right there, the conversation ended. <laughs> I go, listen, yeah. I got something on Monday. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're enough. How crazy is that? That is funny. That I was just a serial shoplifter that wouldn't even walk out of the store. Yeah. And you he, were a magician at a 7 Eleven. So I would come to Josh's house and go, What are you doing today? He's like, I'm going out with some chicks. We're going to get an eight ball. What do I need? A hundred. I'll be back in an hour. And I would shoot to the mall in Boulder. And there was all, there was like May DNF. Remember May DNF? Mm -hmm. They had $300 blankets. And then something happened that really fucking, I started making big money espresso machines. Oh. Once the espresso machine came out with the combination cappuccino, yeah. they were 400 I was doing two, three a day. And you know, you just walk right in, grab it, right go right, in, to, the, right, right in. to the register. So today I would go to Century City. Wednesday I would go to Woodland Hills. Thursday I would even, like, I would even get fucking crazy. Let's go to San Diego. We'll eat a steak on the way back and get a hotel room. Like, I would just go down anywhere they had. Now you'd need your roll of those stickers that yeah. they hit you with when you Came come in. On, you'd so. be walking around with one of those yeah. in a holster, just walking around the whole That's store. That's because of me. Oh, boom, boom, yeah, boom, I got boom. so good. I never forget one day I made seventeen hundred bucks and I got so high on weed, and I walked into the comedy works. This was while I was a comic in the beginning, but not getting spots. I paid to see somebody, mm -hmm. and I never forget. I was so high that I took the money out and put it on the counter and paid the guy. And I sat down, I left $1,700 on the counter. And I came back and I left my money and I like, no, you didn't. <laughs> and I'm like, you motherfuckers robbed me. But it was like nothing. I'm like, I'll go get another $1,700 tomorrow. <laughs> and I woke up the next day and stole four coffee machines. It was crazy, Greg Garcia. It was just, it got to the point where I would get coked up at night and I was making notes. I was going to contact all these companies and explain to them <laughs> how I could do security for them. Like on six, like I wanted to be on 60 minutes. They would have put you in jail. But that's the thing. I would have broken their system. Everybody wants to know how you break their system. If I come to you and say, Josh Wolf, I come in peace. Yeah. I robbed $11 million from you last year. You're like, no, you didn't. Let me give you the proof. And yeah. And I say to you, this is how I robbed it, and this is how other people are robbing you. You're going to be interested in what I got to say to you. Don't you think they call the cops? <laughs> no. No. No? Nah, you not if you're going to stop the problem. Water, great guy, so yeah. I'm good. No, oh, you no, need no, a no. water. <laughs> I just want to clarify one thing. Isn't every one of the companies you stole from now bankrupt and gone? <laughs> well, that's what happened. <laughs> we, about the we just found. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sears is the only one I never knew. Oh, 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 no. Don't yeah, 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 yeah. I know you didn't steal. When I, was on, when I was on on bail for kidnapping, Sears would put their CDs <laughs> right by the door. Yeah. When I was a kid, there was a Sears in North Bergen, but there was also a Sears in Richfield Park, and they had car stereos that they would put by the door. <laughs> if there was 100 car stereos, I swear to my mother's grave, I stole 98 of them. <laughs> Every day I walked out of there with a car stereo. So I'm on a hot on bail for kidnapping, and the hottest album is that Bruce Springsteen 4-CD kit with him with the guitar, uh -huh. yeah. 87, maybe 88. I don't know what year. I don't even know. Dog, I was stealing those every day. They were forty nine ninety five, but the CD store in town would give me twenty five dollars. I was going in. I'm out on kidnapping, bail for kidnapping, and I'm going in there every day, putting stacking all the CDs together. And at one point, I would just pick up a stack of CDs and walk out of the came uh, Sears and go to my car and go up on the hill and sell the fucking CDs, and I get one hundred and fifty for the day. That's enough for me in those days. <laughs> And one day, fuck it, I, I set it up, and I'm walking out of there, and I hear, hey, you, stop. And it's the skinny black security guard, and they got a cart. And I start running, and I'm throwing no. CDs at the guy. Stop and it. he's dunking. <laughs> they got a cart. And in those days, I could run. I was still not heavy. I had to be 27, 28. I'm out on bail. And I'm dodging them, dog. I'm dodging them. I'm fucking jumping over trees. I'm like, OJ. <laughs> and every two minutes, I throw another CD at him and shit. <laughs> Bah, I must have, and I must have had twenty CDs. Yeah. So I, they got me for finally a cop car pulled over, and I'm like, I'm fucked. And they asked me what my name was, and I lied completely. Like I would get out of the car and go rob, but I would leave my license and everything in the car. I would never go in there with ID, so I could be whoever. All right. So. I, By the way, good note. <laughs> Who do you think you're dealing? Yeah, with yeah, something? that's actually. Yeah. This is a long time. Ago. Yeah, this yeah. This is one yeah. I never had an idea. Even if I had an idea, I didn't have an idea. Well, by the way, I knew you for a couple of for years. For years, yeah. I know, don't, don't know your business. What's what my name is? Don't worry about it. So they <laughs> took me to jail, and I went under the impression I gave. Him, I told him I was somebody else. Oh this is the funniest guest book ever. 
I walk into the jail. I had just been in there for a month and a half. You know how I am. Yeah. I had the place. <laughs> I would drink milk. I, I was running the Kool Aid scam. So I walk into the county jail and everybody's like, Joey, oh shit, it's party time. Now, the card had, I can't tell you the alias I used, but let's just say I used the alias Josh Wolf. The fingerprint card had Josh Wolf on it. No, it had Josh Wolf on it. And the cop was still calling me Joey. So, Joey, how you been? <laughs> and, he's, and I'm like, when is this cop going to look up and see that I'm using a different name? They fucking fingerprinted me, which is no good because NCIC will give them the report in a few days. But it wasn't now. Yeah. Like, now I fingerprint you in ten, two seconds. Boom, they know you, you come are. up. Yeah. In those days, they had to send that off. And depending on what crime you did, it could take 30 days. Yeah. So I'll never forget, I gave him the fingerprints. They put me in the cell. Now I had to get out. You got to produce an ID. I go, I lost my ID. My ID got someone. Well, somebody has to come in here and say who you are. So I called my girlfriend at the time. And I'm like, hey, it's Josh Wolf. And she's like, what are you talking about? It's Josh Wolf. I'm in Boulder County Jail. But I wouldn't even let her say, Joey, what are you talking about? It's Josh Wolf. I took you on a date a couple nights ago. You're in Boulder County Jail. Come down here and identify me and I get out. And she came down, and they bought the whole story, and they let me out as Josh Wolf. And me being the loyal guy that I am, I went to court. As Josh Wolf? He was a dear friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> he, the name I gave, he's a dear friend oh, of mine. Really? I grew up with him. And I, so I went to court, did the volunteer work, paid the fine. As and, somebody else. And I went on probation for six months and somebody else. I go back home and I bump into him and we're talking at dinner one night and he goes, did I ever tell you somebody used my ID on Colorado? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that is, that and is the volunteer boring. service, the volunteer I did was working at the AIDS unit. For some reason, I go, I want to do it at the AIDS unit. And they made me go to the AIDS unit in town, downtown, and paint it. But because at that time, Gay guys were getting with AIDS, were so getting ridiculed. It was yeah. 87. Yeah. People were still throwing bottles at him and shit. There was a guard, cop there. This is a funny, this is how life works. We were having a conversation last night about God, two nights ago or something. And I said that I, I don't believe there is a God, but there's situations that lead you to places where you got to think back and go, there might not be a God, but there's something. Mm -hmm. So every day I would go to paint the wall. There was a cop there with a holster. First couple days, he treated me like a criminal that I was. But after that, he started talking to me. And he noticed I had a heart, and he had a heart. And when I finished painting after the 60 hours of community service, the guy turned to me one day, and he goes, you ever have a problem in this town, you call me. He goes, I know you made a mistake, and he gave me his card. And I kept in touch with him. You know me, Doug. Mm -hmm. I'm relentless. I would call him once a week and say, what's up? Everything's good. So when I went through my divorce, I started calling him. And I'm like, she's not giving me the kid. And he would calm me down and blah, 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 blah. And one day, I had two felonies. And my ex-wife's boyfriend called me a spick. And I go, I could either go to jail or let this guy keep calling me a spick. I go, you know what? I'm going to go to jail, have my friends send me the fax machine. And I'll write jokes for Jay Leno. This is where my head was in yeah. 1995. So I fucking smacked the guy at a Safeway. And the cops came. And who was the cop that came? The guy. And he came right to me and took my story first. And the other cop was like, we got to put him away. And the guy's like, he ain't going nowhere. He called him a spick. We're in the city limits of Boulder. You can't use a racial slur in the city limits of Boulder. It's a free smack to the mouth. <laughs> Free smack to the mouth. Because in 1988, a chick called J.J. Flanagan the N-word, and he smacked her, and he got away with it because it's, it's, it was instinct. Yeah. So they didn't charge me, but that cop, that's, how, that's why I say there's got to be something out there because that cop, the other guy's holding his face with an ice pack. Usually a cop goes to him. Yeah. And he came right to me, and I told him, like, oh, this is the motherfucker that's been fucking with me for the last two years, and I couldn't take him no more, and he got what he got, and I even put my hands on him. He goes, relax, you ain't going nowhere. 
And the other guy was like a white cop, and he listened to the story. Oh, he struck him. He was like, my boy's not going nowhere. And then when they sent people to break my ribs that time, and they came they oh hit, yeah, they hit my dog with the two-by-four, I got the one guy, and I hit him. That's the cop I called. I go, I got a guy here with a broken rib cage, and fucking, I just stuck my foot in his mouth. What do you want me to do with him? He goes, I'll be there in 10 minutes. Yeah. And he came over. And we took a wrapper, like like paint wrapper for the floor. We put him in the trunk of a police car. And there was no cameras in those days. We threw him out by the ambulance in Boulder. That cop was solid, dog. I still remember, <laughs> I still remember his name. He was he solid. Sounds like a good friend. Yeah. Solid, solid. Yeah. Didn't ask no questions. Uh -uh. I told him the truth. I go, I was watching ESPN, a football game. And I let my dog out because in those days I had a remote control. We just opened the garage and the dog would go outside. And I heard them hit the dog. I came down, and two guys jumped me. And I grabbed one of them and kicked him and hit him with the two-by-four. And then I kicked him in the <laughs> mouth, and I could hear his teeth cracking. It was tremendous. So I, I couldn't dial 911. I'd just been on probation. Yeah? So I called him like a man. I go, Durf, these guys jumped me. Handle it. And he goes, I'll be right over there. And he came over, and he kicked the guy in the stomach. <laughs> 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 we picked them up. We put them in the trunk. We left it open. And we just drove him to the ambulance and dropped him off in the back of emergency. So they wouldn't even see him. And he goes, don't ever say anything to anybody. And that was it. He's probably dead now. He was an old man. <laughs> <laughs> but my secret died with him. <laughs> Until right Until now. now. Yeah. Until now. But yeah. who the fuck cares? All those people are dead and gone. <laughs> Greg Garcia, you did it again. Another masterful fucking TV show. For me, it's next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, we got you in the first me one. Me in the first one on the 23rd. Yeah. And then a week later on the 30th. Uh, two weeks later. Two, two weeks, weeks later, later, you'll be in the fourth one, yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on the 30th, my Netflix special comes out. Okay. So then we got shit going on for a few weeks. And you just got a special you released. The special is on my website, comedianjoshwolf.com. It's called Father of the Year. It's $5. $5. Comedianjoshwolf.com. $5. Comedian Joshua five dollars. Five dollars. That's it. Nobody knows nothing. Come on. Five yeah, dollars. yeah, yeah. Five Nobody dollars. gets their feelings no. hurt. No. You spent $5. I was on a fucking subway and I'll get the sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. You still got $15 from your husband for lunch. Exactly. <laughs> Dog, it used to He's good to go. Oh. Dog, I would... like bringing it up. I see how, how uh, mad he gets. He would talk it about was... it constantly. And like I would ask him for 20 bucks. Like I would say, can, let me, can I get a 20? And he would like look at me like, really? <laughs> like really? Like 20 was, was you couldn't even say the number 20 around. You yeah. can say 19, 48. You know, she, who won the lotto last night? 64. She, because... 33, 20, was, 20. Let me tell you about fucking 20. Come it on. was because... I'll, I, rem I just remembered the joke. You know what the joke was? Mm. Was it the one where... Because she called me a Jew. Remember? She was like, it's $20 a day, you Jew. She called me a Jew because I was saying $20 a day is not a big deal, but at the end of the, that's 30 days in a month, that's $600. Six hundred dollars is a big deal. Twenty dollars is not a big deal. And she was like, "You just count that much because you're a Jew." <laughs> and I was like, "You think I count because I'm a Jew?" And she goes, "Yeah." I go, "Well, you're Asian. You want me to say it so you'll understand?" She said, "Yeah." I said, "Are oh, you a spender too much of money? You no spending no more." I don't know how this relationship didn't work. Yeah, she, she hated that joke. <laughs> you are spending too much money. No spending, no more. She fucking. If I tell you something, she's the reason it. I don't eat Thai food. Yeah. Because she would never wash the dishes, and there was always flies. Oh, no. She hated oh. washing dishes, dog. Yeah. If that bitch had to wash a dish, it would kill her, and it would kill Josh Wolf. Every time you saw Josh, he was washing dishes. Yeah. Because Josh wouldn't take it no more. They would be. How long did this last? Yeah. Uh, man. <laughs> well. 20 fucking years. Yeah. It was I mean, 20 years of abuse. No. It was 20. How old is Jakey? Yeah, but. How old is Jakey? 21. So it was 19, 18 years of abuse. <laughs> no. I remember when you, got, when you got your first deal, she sent you a note that she wanted to escalate. Yeah, she wanted something. Like she yeah. wanted like a $30,000 car. Josh was like, I got to tell you something. I go, how's Malia doing? He goes, don't even mention that name. <laughs> she called me. She said she'll leave me alone. But she just needed a new like, car. Yeah, she wanted like a fucking thirty thousand dollars. She was like, it but, never but, stopped. But you know what? I mean, you had to laugh. You had to laugh. You had to laugh. 
You had to laugh. But she was funny. God, she was funny. <laughs> but like also a little bananas, a little you know? Bit. Bro, yeah. That like, bitch could sing like Mariah. Yeah. Carey. Yeah? Yeah, she could definitely sing. She could sing. Mm-hmm. Mm. She could sing. And she was she had funny she said funny shit and when she got drunk, she didn't look Asian. Just her eyes looked a little Asian. Mm-hmm. That's it. But everything else wasn't Asian about it. Yeah. But there was something about it that just made you fucking Dude, laugh. she didn't give a shit. Did not give a shit. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> and you angled it up. You were the, you were, yeah, you were the TV you screen. Were the TV oh. screen. It's going to bounce oh, off to Josh. <laughs> as soon as you see those chairs swerving, yeah. you know it's coming for you. You let it happen. I wasn't know? looking at your chair until I wasn't the last looking at your chair until the last second. Oh. Someone, got, someone listening has to work for OSHA. You have this no situational awareness. <laughs> You gotta have your head on a swivel over there, man. Head on a swivel, man. He's only six inches away from you. Oh, dog. He I stopped a, doing this for a while. Listen, I don't know I'm, why he's back. I'm a professional, at, especially, like I told you, I get on the plane, I look I around, I see everybody with earphones. It's every man for himself. I I'm throw, on a plane tonight. This time. You are? This time's I'll fart, and I can hear it with the explosion on mm, the chair. Oh, my God. And I know the guy next to me has to like get the vibration. Uh, <laughs> he thinks it's like turbulence, <laughs> turbulence and shit. I can't wait till I sit next to you next time. I'm gonna uh, fart. I mean, you're, not, you're not ever sitting next to me. I don't want you next to me. You're in the back <laughs> of the dungeon. I love getting upgraded to first class, and I just sit there in one A. And as people walk by, I look at them. I go, "Get to the dungeon." <laughs> <laughs> and they look at me like, "What the fuck is he talking about?" Get to the dungeon. I see all these LA people with like they always have extra. Like to make themselves be special. Yeah. And I always think to myself, where the fuck are they sitting? And if I see them and I sit in first class, I torture them with all their tattoos and bracelets. Get in the dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sit there and they just look at me and shake their head. What a... <laughs> Get in the dungeon. Cut uh... second. Dog, I upgrade on everything except New York or Chicago. I got an upgrade tonight? Yeah. I got upgrade. I live in upgrade. So I live in first class, and I tell the guy next to me, I ask him nicely, can I get the aisle? If he's a nice guy, I let him live. Yeah. <laughs> if he's a fucking scumbag, I ask for fucking something milky. I'm lactose tolerant. What comes out of my ass You're is pure up. tear gas. Oh, yeah. What do you ask him for? Last something milky. No, like, what, how do you determine if he's a good guy? Like to sit. Can, can you switch the, from me? Yeah. Oh, because if you're in the window. Yeah, because I don't like the window. It gives me anxiety, so you're going to get fucking bombarded anyway. See, I love the window. I, I like to be. I don't want to be inside because I got anxiety, and then I got to pee more. And then the guy next to me fucking falls asleep, and I got to break his balls off fucking night. So I tell him that. I say, listen. If you don't want to switch from me, you're going to have a hard time. Because I'm going to get up 15 fucking times from anxiety to pee. And then if they say no, okay, I'm going to open up this asshole. (laughs) And and I'll get something on the menu that's got some milk in it. And I'll just open up a can of whip ass at them. (laughs) Every time they smell it. What a threat. I'm going to open up this asshole. Listen to me. Their whole body shakes. Crazy threat. When when you fart. (laughs) Has anyone like switched seats with you mid-play? Like, okay, okay, I'll I'll do it. I've had You got it. I'll switch I had about six months ago, I had an old lady next to me that was catching like horror. (laughs) I went to like Texas or something. She was catching. And the problem is you don't shit that morning and you get on the plane. So the last two hours of the flight, it's those death shit, those death farts <sighs> that come out before you shit that last couple of, that they're real close to your asshole. This poor lady asked her husband if she could switch. Oh, no. <laughs> she, she had eaten like three of them. Oh, and no. she was. <laughs> <laughs> and she was, the best is when I wake people up yeah. with a fart. That is what I know. The you know what the best is the best is when their makeup looks worse when they get off the plane. You're like, what the <laughs> fuck? You know what I mean? Because their face has been scrunched up the whole time, so and they're... they got that pillow like you <laughs> yeah. smacked in their face. Josh, Just well, if I have woken face. up, I've I've heard people go <laughs> like yeah. in their sleep, like. <laughs> <laughs> Just choking on it. Especially a mint, because yeah. they have to wear goggles. Yeah, yeah. There was a lady who was, I stood up to fart. Yeah. And she what? Left. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to kick you off a plane. <clears throat> Not this last trip to Fort Lauderdale, the one back from Boston. Yeah. If you've been on mint. Yeah. So yeah. I had the solo booth. 
Oh, and the had, two or four. The, I you go gotta, solo. Yeah, you got to. Two or four or six. I went and I was blasting so many farts in the tube that I couldn't take it. Like I was in the cubicle by myself. <laughs> the farts were going low to the floor. So every time like I bent over to get an iPod or something, I could smell it. It was just the root of the asshole. Like six you inches. Ask yourself. So I opened up the door and <laughs> let it out. <laughs> and there's this lady sleeping next to me. And I can see her. She's four hours up. They give you those things to put on your eyes. You know that, right? Yeah. They give you a gift pack on yeah. mint, yeah. tremendous yeah. Yeah. toothbrush, the whole thing. Yeah, she's got. She's playing the game. She's deep asleep <laughs> with the goggles. <laughs> and all of a sudden, when I got up, I turn. I make believe I'm doing. I'm getting something out of my overhead compartment. Yeah, but I'm also doing toe raises because I don't want. I'm a fat dude. I don't want to get blood clots. Uh -huh. So when I'm doing all that. A fart just slips out, and I'm making believe now. Like I don't want to bring it back into the cubicle. Yeah. So I'm standing in the hallway, crooked in my cubicle, making believe I'm pulling something out. And all of a sudden, <laughs> nicely, yeah. I see it, and she swat her nose like it's a fly, right? <laughs> like it started off with like this just must be a fly. She was deep in sleep, and finally, dog, she actually like popped up. Like the whole fart got her. It, like, it was like the, it was like the exorcist. She took a deep breath of this fart, and her whole body stiffened up. And she took the goggles off and popped up and looked around. And I was like, "You smell it too?" Yeah. And she was like, "Man, that is terrible." I go, "I had to get up. I think it's him." And I sat back down. This poor lady sat there for an hour figuring it out. Oh. How bad? <laughs> but the all-time best. I had to be thirteen, and I took the number one bus. From Jersey City to North, from North Bergen to the high school, but that bus originates in Jersey City outside the methadone clinic. When we were kids, people would take the number one bus to Jersey City, get methadone, drink it, then get back on the bus. And we were sitting towards the back, facing him. You know those chairs where you don't face the front, yeah, you yeah. face each other. Three people could sit in that one. Well, I was faced right opposite him. And I had been farting all morning. It's 8 in the morning. He's on heroin. His head is down. He's got drool from his lip to the newspapers reading the, the daily news. And he's just passed out on the heroin. And I fucking took my hips and I pulled them up just like I'm telling <laughs> oh, you. Oh, yeah. And he was like four feet away. And that's when I was addicted to steakums. <laughs> I was eating steakums. Steakums every night for dinner. Two steakums with American cheese and a ride of french fries. What comes out of it. Because steakums. It's, it's just not real meat. It's just somebody's leg. Yeah. Like when you see an accident on the 405 yeah. and somebody loses a leg, it's the EMT em. calls fucking uh, Steakums. Steakums. They get a couple off. Arby's? No. Uh, the, the meat in the can. Spam. 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 They all got to call this and I got a black leg. It's fresh. You <laughs> weighed about 600, so you got like fucking 20 cans of Spam. I'm calling White Castle next, so <laughs> get back to me. It's like, you know what I'm saying? They call Spam, White Castle. And like Wendy's, and they go, we got this dead leg. Where do we send it to? <laughs> and steak them. So, dog, I blasted one of those steak them farts. Yeah. I remember like positioning my hips and laying back in the seat. Oh, my and it hit the chair, and you could hear it just go. And it just went right to his nose. And he was passed out. And I remember he just went, like he just opened his eyes, and he went like this. And he was like, what in the world? <laughs> <laughs> it's like an adrenaline shot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Greg Garcia, you did it again, my brother. Congrats. Well, this is your what? Your 19th year in television? Uh, in a row? 25, I think. Jesus Christ. Crazy. Yeah. Did yeah. you ever think that this would be this way? No. Uh-uh. No, I had no idea. And, uh, yeah, and, and then when I started working, you know, you don't know how long you're going to work either. So, no, you just uh, consider yourself lucky every day. We've all been here 20 years. It's fucking... It's crazy. It's really fucking crazy, man absolutely insane i can't believe it like i still cannot believe it i look at that comedy store lineup that you sent to me every now and then i don't send it to you you sent it to me darren carter puts it out darren carter's got that lineup uh, me you dave Chappelle closing sully mccullough's on that sully mccullough this it's it's just i sit there and people have no idea that i came to this town like on a whim like yeah let's just see what happens yeah like, let's just see what happens i got into the comedy store and I just never left. I was like a bug on the wall. It's so crazy how now you're in it. 
Yeah. Like you're in it. Yeah. I think all of us just came. I was just like, we didn't know anybody. <laughs> like, let's just give this a try. You ever have a conversation with somebody in your last 20 years that you left and said, I can't believe I was just talking to that person? All the time. Like, I can't believe I yeah. was just talking to that person. Like, I just saw him on. Like, this still happens to me. Me too. Yeah. Especially if it's somebody you watched growing up. And yeah. It's just crazy. I'm buddies with um, the guy. You, did you watch those uh, uh, HR Puff and stuff and Land of the Lost and those yeah, things? Yeah, Sid yeah. and Marty it's, Croft? Yeah. 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 There's a dude that I've become buddies with, uh, Marty Croft. It's just amazing to me. I just watched those shows nonstop when I was a kid. And, HR and, Puff and stuff. Yeah. But you yeah. also, like, uh, you didn't you get a Smokey and the Bandit car? I did. Yeah. Got a Smokey and the Bandit car. And, uh, and I got it signed by Burt Reynolds. Yeah. And then the car wash guy washed it off. Oh, yeah. That's how you were telling us. Yeah. That's right. When the Burt the week Burt Reynolds yeah. died. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Got, got scrubbed off. And uh, he was going to re-sign it in October. <laughs> yeah. He, you know what? Like, he went, when he died, I went back and looked at all the movies he made. He was in the seventies. Was a fucking the dude. Oh yeah. But and like a true movie star, movie star, movie star. More like you know, like they. I don't know that they have movie stars like he was now. It was. Do you know what I mean? Like everybody's so accessible now. The difference between the stars then and the stars now is that they and Nick Nicholson never made himself super accessible. Yeah. They removed themselves from the regular people. Do you know what I mean? It's crazy. Which how. gave them some like m mystery. There's no mystery to anybody. And I'm not here to put anybody down, but like when the guy won the Oscar for the Hurt Locker, 30 years ago that guy wouldn't be invited to a room. Steve McQueen would have punched the fuck out of him. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way it is, you know. Yeah. Steve McQueen and Bronson would have knocked the fuck out of Matt Damon and his little buddy. Like they would have ripped his wig off and told him don't come back to this fucking <laughs> studio ever again. Like it's. These guys were different. Like when when you you know when you were around Burt Reynolds, there was something about him that you know we were telling the story. I, I think here, when we Burt Reynolds wanted to shoot something, and if you watch the Longest Yard, there's one scene where he tackles me and I actually go down. Yeah, I remember going down, going this guy could still fuck somebody up. Yeah, like don't get correct. He still has two good punches in him. Yeah. Like, if you watch The Longest Yard now, the original, they cut it out. But he smacks that bitch in the opening of the movie. He gets in the car. It's it's Saturday Night uh, Whatever by Leonard Skinner. He was truly a man of the 70s. Yeah, like he dude. Was, and those stars do not exist today. No. The guy that does the movies with whatever that is not. Uh, Deadpool. What all, that, that's Ryan not, Reynolds. Yeah. That's, not, that's not what I'm talking about. Those guys wouldn't even. They would get beat up. They would actually get beat up. Yeah, they were. It was a different type of star. It was star. a different type yeah, of star. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's funny when I told you that the one day, Steve, uh, he told me a story that Steve McQueen called, or Clint Eastwood called Burt Reynolds and said, get your motorcycle. That director died. We're going to drive out to Vegas and piss in his grave because they fired Clint Eastwood. And Clint Eastwood goes, it doesn't really matter. When you die, I'm going to piss on your fucking grave. <laughs> you know, all those type of... It's a different Hollywood. Yeah. It's entirely. a different Hollywood. You know, when they booked The Magnificent Seven, the star was Yul Brenner. And all those guys got together that are in that movie and said, he's not going to come from some, no, some foreigner. is not going to come here and steal a movie from us. So they fucked with him at that Formosa Cafe. George C. Scott, McQueen, Charles Bronson would call him up all night and send him room service at the hotel <laughs> so he wouldn't sleep all night. It's a different type of fucking animal. Yeah. You know, now everybody's fake. They got to be buddy-buddy. You got to be politically correct. You really can't say what's on your mind. So these guys don't. I wouldn't. What's the other one you went to see? Not Deadpool, but the bug and all that. Those guys aren't stars. What bug? Ant-Man? I got to know what that was. They're just, they're just actors. Hey, maybe bro. it's Ant-Man. I don't know. I didn't see Ant-Man in the scene. What we judge good acting today gets eaten alive, what I grew up on. That scene that I showed you, that's real acting. That was fucking great. That's real. Yeah, that was. That really made me want to watch that movie. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Until you said five hours. That's for four hours. Sergio yeah. did that. Once Upon a Time in, in America with, with uh, 
with uh, when they played noodles. Yeah, yeah, with yeah. All yeah, those yeah, people, yeah. the Jews taking yep. over, and then Maya Lansky. That's a five-hour fucking movie. Holy Once shit. upon a time in America, it's four hours and forty-six yeah, movies. Yeah, yeah. You didn't tell those people to cut your movie down in those days. It's like cut it down. What? Get the fuck out of here before I smack you. You know, it was a different savage then. You know, that's why they didn't want Marlon Brando for The Godfather. After what he did to them on Mutiny on the Bounty, yeah. they just sent Marlon Brando down there and, and he picked somebody. He's like, Who? hey, you, come here. You ever direct before? No. You're directing. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to go fuck this Hawaiian up the ass for the next <laughs> two, 20 years. And that's what he did. Yeah. And they wouldn't, they like, we gave you millions to shoot a fucking movie. And you put a Hawaiian to shoot the movie and you go fuck some other chick. And then he bought the island. They don't have that no more. No. Now. They have to act it out to be that. Yeah, there's too there's too uh, I think there's too much stuff to be that crazy, you know. When, yeah. the, when it was like you know it was like not a lot of things. You could also hide it a little bit. Yeah, it's harder to hide crazy now. It's really hard to hide crazy because everybody's got a fucking. Where are you gonna be crazy? Everybody's got a camera. Yeah, all the time. All the time. Yeah, way more accountable. Yeah, where are you gonna be crazy? Uh. Uh-uh. Those days are long fucking. Yeah. Time. Yeah. The, yeah, I mean, I do know some par- people who have parties now who make you leave your phone at the door. That's how you know it's going to be a good party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they don't ask for my phone, yeah, I just turn around turn and leave. leave. Yeah. You get invited to parties when people ask you? No. Somebody asked me to leave my phone at the door. I told them to go fuck themselves. Yeah. <laughs> you can go fuck you and your mother. I'm going to giving you my fucking phone. <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you. Yeah, I got yeah. responsibilities, bitch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got responsibilities. I got some hoes out there making money and shit. Greg Garcia, always a pleasure. Josh Wolf. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. They can find your new CD. New Comedianjoshwolf.com. It's called Father of the Year. And you on TBS, the 23rd, the premiere. Yes. With Uncle with Joey Uncle in it. Joey. I will remind you people next Tuesday, next Monday to watch it. And that's it. And that's that. We had a great week. I love you, motherfuckers. I want to thank Greg Garcia who has a fucking Twitter page and who gives away more money than fucking, uh, yeah. you know. This guy gives away more money than the fucking Kardashians. So if you're not following him, you're fucking up. <laughs> the other day, he had people fucking gambling, giving three numbers like he's Cuban. I know. And all of a sudden, I'm running the numbers. Yeah, he was that. running fucking numbers. I'm like, everyone, my whole page was uh, Sunday was telling me 447 832 844. And I retweet it because I love it. Yeah. Make some money with Greg Garcia. Let's I saw you. that, yeah. I That's love awesome. it. And then I laugh because you get every single guess as well. And then I got to go through all that shit. It's crazy. I love it. I Jim, love Joey it. retweets it. Forget about it. That's Wait, my Sunday I night. I love it. I I'm love flipping it. through. Do you? It's the first person to say the number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got to be a tie. Yeah, if a tie, it's got to go to the first person. So then I go through it. I got to figure out. Sometimes I just put out there like I think this is the winner. Somebody speak up if it's not. And then yeah. they're like, no, look at this. I had it earlier. I'm like, all right, you're the new winner. I Sounds only retweet good. funny jokes, and when Greg Garcia is giving away money, yeah, <laughs> somebody's giving away money. I retweet those motherfuckers. <laughs> if one of my friends can make a dollar bill, I'm here for you. Why you know not? What I'm why not? You, yeah. just, you buy them, I smash them. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. Have a great week. All right, I want to thank my main man, Josh Wolf. Always a pleasure. I can't believe I know him 20 years. I want to thank Greg Garcia for stopping by. But most importantly, I want to thank you guys for listening and for giving us the opportunity. Before you go, let me talk to you about something. Listen, watching the games, the baseball playoffs, football, the UFC, it's fun. But it's a lot more entertaining when you've got some action on the games. I'm not encouraging you to bet. What I'm saying is talking about making money by doing it correctly. You guys heard me talking about this for weeks, and now it's time you fucking sit on the bowl, okay? Whether you're an expert or a rookie, you should be betting at my book. You're like, why, Joey? If you're the kind of guy that likes to bet a little and win a lot, like playing numbers on a roulette, you create a big parlay. You pick three teams, three moves, and if you hit all three of them, you can turn 100 into 600. There's so much to bet on. Playoff baseball, hockey, fights, college football, football, Jesus Christ. But my book is the one you bet I know you'll be happy with, all right? I recommend these guys because I trust them. My bookie has been in business for years. they got great online reviews, and their mobile site is easy to use. So listen, stop sitting there like a mook. The holidays are two months away. You got Thanksgiving, you want to show up with a turkey, or you want to eat fucking a tofu turkey? That's up to you. My bookie will match your first deposit dollar, dollar for dollar, but you got to join today, right now, because they're pulling that offer. Log into my bookie right now and double your gitas. 
Use promo code CHURCH, C-H-U-R-C-H, and you'll get your first deposit matched 100%. My bookie, you play, you win, you get paid. You understand me? And at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. Let me ask you a question. You know what's not smart? Job sites will overwhelm you with tons of the wrong resumes. But you know what is smart? You guessed it. ZipRecruiter. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash church. Unlike other job sites, ZipRecruiter doesn't wait for candidates to find you. ZipRecruiter finds them. It's a powerful matching technology that scans thousands of resumes, identifies people with right skills, education, and experience for your job, and actively invites them to apply. So you get the best candidates available, qualified and fast. No more sorting through wrong resumes. No more waiting on the right candidates to apply. It's no wonder ZipRecruiter is rated number one by employers in the U.S. And that rating comes from higher insights on Trustpilot with over a thousand reviews. And right now, the church family, whether you've got a big business or a small business or a medium business, right now you can try ZipRecruiter for free. Joey, what do you mean? I'm telling you, you can try it for free by going to this exclusive address, ZipRecruiter.com slash church. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash church. Church, C-H-U-R-C-H. ZipRecruiter.com slash church. No more waiting and scanning for these bums. You want the right candidate? ZipRecruiter is the way to go. Again, free. ZipRecruiter.com slash church. And let us not forget about investments. Robinhood is the investing app that lets you buy and sell stocks, ETFs, options, cryptos, all commission-free. Simple and intuitive, clear design with the data presented in an easier way to digest, okay? Listen, my wife goes on there. She loves Robinhood. I don't know what she's been doing lately, but she loves it. It's easy to understand charts and market data. Place a trade in just four taps on your smartphone. It's that easy. Rob, the Robinhood web platform also lets you view stock collections, 100 most popular sectors like entertainment and social media and curated categories like female CEOs and analyst ratings of buy, hold, and sell for every stock. Listen, you learn by doing. You learn how to invest as you build your portfolio. You discover new stocks and track favorite companies with a personalized news feed. What I'm going to do is this. Robinhood is giving the church, the family, us, a free stock like Apple, Ford, Sprint, to help build your portfolio. Who does that for you? Nobody. Uncle Joey does that for you. Sign up at church.robinhood.com. You've been thinking about it for a long time. It's time you pulled the trigger. And Robinhood is going to give the church a free stock like Apple, Ford, or Sprint to help build your portfolio. Sign up at church.robinhood.com. That's church.robinhood.com. Listen, I want to thank Josh Wolf. I want to thank Greg Garcia. I want to thank Michael Bisming and Louis J. Gomez. I want to thank the, the fucking Christ killer. But most importantly, I want to thank you guys for being part of the church family. Do not forget, I want to also give a special shout out to Roots of Fight. They always send me great stuff. Do not forget, next Thursday, bitches, straight up motherfucking uh, hilarities in Cleveland. And then, 11-8, Kate Quigley and myself invade the New York City Comedy Festival at Gotham, tickets are cheap, Thursday night, Friday night, two shows, Saturday night, two shows. So you got hilarities, 11.25 through 11.27, uh, <clears throat> 1025 through 1027, which is October, and then you got New York, Gotham. Who gives a fuck about New York, Gotham? I'll see you motherfuckers at hilarities in Cleveland, all right? Have a great week. Have a great weekend. God bless you motherfuckers. I love you. And I'll see you guys bright and early Tuesday morning. No, Monday morning I'll see you guys, all right? Stay black. Have a great weekend. Uncle Joey loves you. Kick this fucking mule, Lee.